Welcome to the Next Dimension Podcast, your portal to an extended reality. Every week we talk about the hottest topics in XR and let you join the discussion live on MRTV. And now, get ready for another exciting episode coming up. Hi and welcome back to Season 2, Episode 18 of the Next Dimension Podcast. Your podcast that is all about VR and AR. And this is a very special show. This is the first time that we're back in 2022. And before we start, I would like to say that it's not so easy for us to talk about something like virtual reality when not very far away from us Innocent civilians are being bombed in Ukraine. And in the name of all the podcast members of this show, we would like to express our solidarity for the people, for the brave people of Ukraine. And I'm more than happy to say hello to Tatiana. Tatiana, how are you doing today? Hi, Sebastian, and hi, everyone. Um, first of all, it's great to be back on the show. I really miss this. And, uh, um, it, it's been a long time since I was even doing anything related to VR for anyone who is, um, watching right now. I am proud Ukrainian, even though based in the U S and, uh, my family is still there. Like my whole family is in Ukraine, but they are doing well, how are they doing? Sorry, so sorry about this. There was something wrong going on now. I'm That's so sorry okay. about this. Yeah. That's what happens when we have such a big gap between yep. the seasons. You forget how to <laughs> exactly, <use it. laughs> exactly. And it's a live show, so I'm so sorry about this interruption. No, that's okay. Um, I, I, I will try to keep it short, even though you know those who know me know I can talk about this forever. But I think they're just trying to get used to this new reality. Um, my mom is in Poland right now, so she is not in Ukraine. And my father and my brother are still in Ukraine. And it's incredibly hard because they are witnessing everything that's going on. Um, I think they're very fortunate to not be in one of those places that is being actively bombed. Um, so I'm, I feel a little bit better about that just knowing that they are in relative safety even though for now every single big city in ukraine has been bombed like there is no safe spot anymore um and even being in the place that hasn't been bombed too much there are air sirens going off multiple times a day especially during the night and that's just very unsettling because just living in a place where you can hear sirens um, warning you that there might be an aerial attack is psychologically incredibly difficult. So regardless of that, I think they are doing okay, at least as as good as it can be possibly expected during these times. So that's, that's all I can say. And I haven't been able to do anything for the past three weeks. But that I am, makes sense. But I am doing better now. So thank you okay. for the support of all the VR community. Wow. We're so happy that you're here tonight. And yeah, again, from all of us, right, all of our thoughts are with you and your family and all the people of Ukraine. Thank you to, to be here. <laughs> Great you. to have you. Yeah, you. also here with us, Gary, Gary Immersed Robot. <laughs> Hello. How are, you? How are you doing, Gary? Yeah, I, I'm doing uh, pretty good. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult uh, it's a difficult time in the world, and I think we made the right call a few weeks ago when yeah. it was in the first few days of what was happening in the Ukraine to just uh, not do the show. It, it was definitely not right to do it at, at that yeah, right. time. We, we we couldn't do that. So, 
um you know and i think we uh just of course you know we're uh, we have solidarity with uh, Ukraine and uh, we, we wish them all the best and hopefully this won't go on for too long. Um, um, and that's really all, the, all, all all I can say. I'm really not qualified to talk about this. I'm sort of living my life in the UK and just watching all of this on TV and it's uh, it's difficult to watch. And it's diff- It's the top news story here all the time. It's, it's just there constantly and you of course. can't help but feel... For the people there so um yeah all the best and uh all the best to you tatiana and to your family too right Thank you. also here with us steve vr flight sim guy how are you doing hi yeah i'm good it's it's very like scary said oh it's very hard to talk about anything when when this is going on and i just want to say regardless of me um tatiana i just i can't believe you're here tonight actually i was really surprised when you popped up and i think that in itself shows the strength of ukrainians actually you know and, and, and just the fact that you're here doing what you love and you're still staying strong is just quite inspirational to be honest so on, on behalf of us all thank you for being here you know and, and i wish you you know wish you well and your family well of course and let's just have a good show and but obviously not forget I'll lose sight of what's happening in the real world, really. But it's uh, it's a very tough yeah, really. time. But I'm I'm okay. I'm well. Same as Gary. I feel frustrated. Sat here, knowing we could do. Could we just do so much more? It's as again, I'm not politically minded enough to understand it all, like you said. But um, I know from, <laughs> you know, it's 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 a rabbit hole. We could talk about this for a long time, couldn't we? Really. But um, it's, yeah, right. I feel like we should be doing more. But it's a very difficult situation right now. Very complex situation. But. Yeah, great to have you here, and I'm fine. I'm all. I'm all good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. Good to have you here, Steve. And uh, the man does not have a Twitter account. <laughs> 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 Just to let everyone know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steve, How bad should, is that? You should get around one. It's it's uh, pretty cool. This is a new hype. This whole Twitter thing. Come on, Granddad. I, I don't understand what it's all about. You just do a status or something. Don't, oh, no, anyway. It's it's not bad. Um, you can reach a lot of people. I am literally and Granddad when it comes You're to right. that. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, and I'm also here. My name is Sebastian Ang. I'm the founder of Emmer TV and the host of the Next Dimension podcast. And like I told you in the very beginning, for me, I'm a really very political guy and... I have very strong opinions and for me it's not easy to talk about something like virtual reality honestly speaking like it doesn't matter if something like this is happening it doesn't matter to talk about the psvr2 design and so on and so forth but still life goes on i'm just happy to speak with um, tatiana i'm so happy to speak with gary and steve even though he doesn't have twitter and i'm <laughs> I, I, <laughs> And this is going to be going to go through the whole show today. Yeah, so I'm really I'm I'm glad to to start the show again. I think this is a great show, <laughs> and I'm glad to be back in 2022. And I really hope that um, you out there that you are happy too that the Next Dimension podcast is back and that we're going to talk about virtual reality every single week again. And I'm simply happy about this lineup. I I really. I really like those. I love those guys here and Tiana. I love I love this podcast, really. And I'm so happy that we're here together, and that we can hang out and yeah, let's talk a bit about about virtual reality. Even though obviously it's not the most important thing right now, but let's still do it. <laughs> yeah. So I actually wasn't going to be here. So yeah, so it's just because I tagged you on Twitter. See, Steve, the magic of Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, I well, should. maybe you're right. I should, you know, maybe you should uh, think about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. yeah, it's it's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> Played you like a fiddle. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a lot is going on. And it's not just Ukraine. You know, we're all trying to get adjusted to, you know, this reality, what's going on. So now we kind of can imagine what, what will happen tomorrow. The course of this war is not going to change in one day as dramatically as we thought it could uh, three weeks ago. And that's when I was a complete mess, just glued to, to TV, afraid to check the news because any moment something drastic you know, could right. happen and it would escalate. Um, I think it's just a little bit more predictable now that we, you know, even though we see from the humanitarian perspective, things are completely awful and heartbreaking. 
from the military perspective, things are starting to look up just a little bit. Right. So we know that we are not going to fall. We are going to win. And that maybe gives me a little bit more inspiration to, you know, I'm proud of who I am and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to spread awareness of, of what's going on in Ukraine. Um, but at the same time, like you said, Sebastian, life goes on. Yeah. And while everything VR related just felt like, like you said, it's silly, you know, not, not important really. And I fell off the face of the earth for three weeks. And now I'm back because this is, I guess this is something I still love doing regardless of what's going on. And yeah, so I'll tell you later what I did <laughs> yesterday <laughs> with okay. VR. You're right. Yeah, yeah, right. So let's talk about, let's start our show, our Next Dimension podcast, season two, episode 18. So for all the people who are wondering, like, why is it still season two? Isn't this supposed to be season three? No, every season has 24 episodes, just like the day has ours. Isn't that beautiful thought out? <laughs> so we still have a few episodes to go before we start with season three. And <clears throat> for all of you who don't know this show, this is a sh show about virtual reality and also augmented reality. And if you enjoy this show, and probably you do because you're here, absolutely do leave us a five-star review on iTunes, simply get out your iDevices now and yeah, open the podcast app, find the Next Dimension podcast, subscribe to us and do leave us a good review if you enjoy what we're doing here. And what we're doing here is bringing you yeah, independent content about virtual reality and our favorite hobby. We simply want to make it feel as if you are hanging out with some friends talking about your favorite hobby. And we do have some catching up to do. So... We didn't talk about the PSVR 2 design, obviously, and we will do that. And we'll talk about what the PSVR 2 might mean for our industry and how it might change it. So this is going to be one interesting topic. We're going to talk about MOS 2. It's going to be coming up later this month. And yeah, this is like one of the blockbuster games in VR. And so I'm personally looking forward to the second part and I'm Looking forward to find out what yeah what the other crew members think about Moss 2. And yeah, we're also going to talk about some other little topics. But in general, we simply want to catch up and we want to restart this show. So yeah, we might also simply like talk about anything that comes to our minds. And like always, we go and talk about what what we recently did in virtual reality or in general. And yeah, I would like to start with you, Tatiana. So tell us about your your last video. We understand that you didn't really do too many things in VR in the last few weeks because obviously you were thinking about other things, but you did come up with a new video recently. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would love to uh, hear more about it. Tell us about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's <laughs> VR was one of the last things on my mind um, for a while, but it's great to to be back in in making this content, but you know, I was I was thinking, okay, I have to do something, I have to do something, but it would be kind of weird if I I can't just go back and act like normal. So I wanted to do a tribute to Ukraine and to our people and to 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 the cities. Uh, so I posted a video actually right before the show. So one thing that I was exploring even during the pandemic is uh, biking in virtual reality with an app called VZ Fit. And I decided to make a video where I give a bike tour in Ukraine, in Kiev specifically. So cool. Um, I went to Kiev just last summer and it's, it was so insane to me that, you know, it was still so fresh in my memory, like all these beautiful places, the nature, the people. And now like I, I just, even if I wanted, I wouldn't be able to go there. And, you know, this is what I think is the strength of virtual reality is it can also um, awaken compassion. You can think about the terrible things that are happening on the other side of the world, but you might not be able to feel them as close because you don't have that personal relation to it. And I think that virtually visiting these places can actually awaken this, this sense of compassion and really, you know, being able to relate to what's going on. So making this video was 
kind of bittersweet because the images are all from the street view. So I was on the stationary bike and I was riding through the streets and just showing some of the uh, so uh, cool. nicest landmarks there. And I talk a little bit about history and all those monuments and what they symbolize and especially the Independence Square where the Revolution of Dignity was was happening. Um, so by doing this video, I basically just try to bring attention to Ukraine, but in a little more positive way. You know, it's a beautiful country and Kyiv is an absolutely gorgeous city. And I, I thought that, you know, I would show that VR users have a chance to actually build that connection with the country that they support by traveling to these places and seeing, you know, what, what the city actually looks like and, and how the people look like. And um, yeah, just to have it on a little bit more personal level. Yeah, and I'll add just a little bit of like historical facts here and there and some of the pictures that I took when I went there in August. And I think that this uh, app is absolutely amazing. Like you can go anywhere, you can build your own uh, tours or you can cool. use one that's already built in the app. Like for example, this tour that I'm taking in this video, it was created by Vizy Fit and it's called Peace for Ukraine. And they put together a charity event where for every kilometer that users would ride, they would donate $1 and they raised $5,000. I love it. What a beautiful so, idea. Yeah, it, it, it. I think it was like very touching for me and I was happy to, you know, to, to find it out. So I, so I took the same tour and I just biked around and I was just sharing my experiences, sharing, you know, my favorite city and a piece of my heart with it because it's, it's deeply personal. Um, so I hope you'll enjoy it if you go to my channel and, and just check it out. Um, that, yeah, I hope you'll have a good time watching it and, you know, enjoying in me for this tour. Wow, so beautiful. So I simply want to say, um, everyone who is watching this now or everyone who is listening to this um, podcast right now, go to Tatiana's channel right now. It's called Disco VR. It's a fantastic channel. And the link is down in the show notes. So go there and subscribe now. And yeah, support Tatiana and... Um, her channel and the Ukraine <laughs> while watching her while watching her content. <laughs> How beautiful is that? <laughs> yeah. So, so really, really, that's that's amazing. I, I love I love this video and what you did there, and to show what VR can do. It's, yeah. It's beautiful. Very creative. Very creative. It's, it's super you, creative. Yeah. Obviously, you were pedaling on a normal bike that wasn't connected in VR somehow, was it? Or oh, um, so just a little bit about the app. Unfortunately, it's a subscription based app. I think it's $10 per month and you can use any stationary bike with it. You need to get like a special little sensor that you oh. can put in your shoe or you can attach it by the pedals and it can detect how quickly you pedal. Huh. But I love it. Brilliant. they recently added a standing mode so that you don't need to have a stationary bike anymore. You can just use a standing mode. And then instead of the sensor, you just use a controller. So you can do, I don't know, you can run in the same spot or you can do squats or some kind of, you know, um, arm exercises and you will still be moving forward. So that's how okay. they try to expand the reach of their app for people who don't necessarily have stationary bikes, but who still want to take advantage of the app, work out, do light cardio and explore all these different places with beautiful street views. So yeah, how, I'm, how is it connected? So That's how is it connected? How is the bike connected to the to the app? So you have this well, little sensor it's a sensor, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so the bike this is connected, connected to the is. to the quest or how does it work? Yes, with Bluetooth. Oh, so you okay, cool. it has a like a phone app, but then the actual sensor connects to your quest with Bluetooth. And it just detects that there's movement going on. So it, it's not actually the bike that's connected. But the sensor right that makes sense you could actually if you were really crazy you could try and do it for real and have the vr headset on <laughs> the bike. Oh, wow. yeah. Obviously, yeah. don't do that do not yeah. do that but... probably yeah. better not well, there's there's one scene in the app where you know they were taking pictures but it looked like i was riding on top of different cars so just keep in mind you don't do this in real life you don't just bike on top <laughs> right. of different cars yeah that another could end thing i like i that. didn't show this in this app because it wasn't really related to kiev and i wanted to keep the video short is that this app has different game modes so it's not just about street views you can play different games that are based on you pedaling for example like it's all going to be 3d generated but instead of riding a bike in vr you will be flying a helicopter and like shooting something 
or you will be flying like a, a, a fly, some kind of a flying horse <laughs> or riding a, or riding a, or riding a horse and like trying to catch some cowboys. So you're like playing different games while pedaling. And um, I, I don't know, it, it just makes it so much more fun than just, <laughs> than just working on a stationary bike. I just absolutely you're love right. this stuff. That's well, cool. this is what what VR has been been doing as well, hasn't it? Like, um, there's so many different fitness apps and stuff like that. And what you were talking about there, Tatiana, it's like a a revolution almost for a lot of fitness stuff, just to get people moving and stuff like this. And I know um, Six on Twitter, he's uh, he he is always talking about this kind of stuff. He started Live, right. and um, what was it? Uh, Your Fit, isn't it? Your Fit, yeah. Right. Your Fit, yeah. Um, but he is a big believer in VR is being used for fitness in this capacity. And I think what you were describing there, Tatiana, is absolutely right. That would be fantastic. And just to have some kind of stimulus, because exercising is boring. That's the problem. It's that's so why. boring. It's and, so yes. boring. And that's why I'm all about the games that have this like fitness games that make fitness feel like it's a game not just a fitness it. app with gaming elements yeah. but like an actual game for example yeah like another another little app that i found on site was just like last week and i made a short about it it's wasn't making a full video but just a short it's a citrus it's no, like tetris. fitness tetris. fitness meets tetris okay cool <laughs> and basically how that work I'll tell you. <laughs> you are playing yeah, Tetris, we're excited. but instead of using your controllers to move, you use your body. Oh. So, for example, you okay. punch with your right hand and you move the little thing to the right. You punch okay. with your left and it moves to the left. Then you do a jumping jack. <laughs> like you do okay, a jumping cool, jack cool. and it drops. It's turn, oh, it's, then you do a now squat. It turn? You squat and it turns. Oh. Oh no! But if you need to turn it three this... times, you do three squats. Oh my god! This <laughs> sounds funny though. This sounds really it's cool. So fun. <laughs> it is. So I'm all about this kind of like really creative ways to yeah. work out where you play and you don't even notice that you're actually working out. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Do, this do, is really cool. Do you know what? The just just yesterday and today we got out our old We Fit board. Ah, and yeah. the kids, I mean, that's older. My son's 13 years old, and that's older than him. And they are still having a whale of a time. They were on it all afternoon today doing oh. We Fit kind of stuff. And it yeah. just it blows my mind that, that that thing, it's almost, what is it, 15 years old, something like that now? The we, And it's still holding their attention because they're doing that kind of stuff. They're doing like active stuff and seeing it happen on the screen. Imagine that translated to virtual reality and everything else that, that virtual reality can oh, do. Man, I used to love tennis. That tennis was incredible in my, me and my house. <laughs> yeah. Even my mom like, loved the tennis on Wii. We, yeah, I, we I can a, remember we, we were playing it on some Christmas. Well, together. yeah. It's... I mean, it's almost it's almost a joke now that you talk to people that are in gaming now and they say, oh, Wii was a gimmick. And I think to a certain extent no. it, it was a gimmick, but it's, it was fantastic. To, for it to hold the attention of a 13-year-old mm -hmm. now, literally four hours... They were doing stuff on Wii Fit today. I mean, and, and that motion sensor—it's the precursor of our Oculus Touch controllers now, right? It's, yeah, it really is. Yes, I mean, it yes, wasn't—it was a three dot control, right? But now yeah. we have—it started with three dot in VR two, and now it's six dot. Yeah, so this is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know what? Uh, you mentioned um, six, Gary, right? Um, six. Yeah. C I X. So yes. I totally agree with him. I also think that like fitness in virtual reality that, that's such a huge thing and it's only going to become bigger once the vr headsets are even smaller you know the quest 2 is already good but it's still like quite a big thing that you have in your head right once those headsets become like this right or mm -hmm. i recently reviewed like the the, the row kit air it's also just like a very very small headset it's going to get better so I do believe that um, fitness in VR really is going to blow up. It's going to be big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's beautiful how you showed that VZ Fit, how you can use it. So you can uh, you can make any kind of tour. I can I can drive around uh, whatever, like Taiwan, like my, my wife's uh, country or whatever. Yes, so any place that actually has the street view because there's some smaller yeah, cities, even in Ukraine, unfortunately, that Google just like, whatever we're not going yeah. to take pictures of that city so you obviously you can't do it there but yeah. some really touristy places like paris i don't know london new york they have even 
higher quality of like the video and you can turn on the 3d effect so all the or like the grand canyon like if you're driving uh, riding through that then you will see everything like in fake 3d it'll look even more realistic I um, yeah i imagine yeah. some of the photogrammetry is better than others uh, yes. in certain areas yeah yeah, I had to turn it off for key if it wasn't as good. It made me a little bit dizzy. But with some other places, it's way better quality. Mm, nice. Yeah, very cool. So everyone, please check out Tatiana's channel and check out her VZ Fit on the Quest 2 video. It's just online right now. Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for letting us know, Tatiana. All right. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, how about you, um, Gary? How was your um, yeah your last three months? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty pretty good, I suppose. Overall, um, the I suppose the main thing to talk about at the minute is the fact that I've not got an index, a working index, anyway, because I noticed um, like uh, well, probably like six months ago, seven months ago, like a couple of dead pixels, and. Um, I've sort of lived with it, and then the IPD adjustment and things like that started to get a bit loose as well. So I thought I'd just contact Valve and just see what they can do for me because, really, I've had the index for two and a half years, nearly three years, I think, since it's been released. So I thought I'd just contact them and see what they can do for me. And when I first contacted them six months ago, they said they'd send me a new one out. So I thought, fantastic. But then I, I thought... I don't really want to be without my index for a while and there was stuff that I needed to do with it at that time. So I just didn't bother sending it back. And then I contacted them again because this these dead pixels were bothering me a little bit more. Anyway, they sent me one out and it doesn't work. So they've sent oh, me no. a, re a, a refurbished <laughs> one, which actually the refurbished, because of before I was looking into the refurbished things that they send out. And there was so many different like contradicting stories about sometimes they were really, really high quality. Sometimes they were awful, these refurbished headsets. So I was, it was a bit of a risk anyway, and I was sort of regretting it. But then I got this new one, and it looked fantastic, pristine. And then I plugged it in, and I'm getting all of these USB errors, and I've gone through everything. I don't want to go through all of that. It will be beyond boring. But anyway, I've contacted them again, and they're – hopefully going to resolve this issue for me but yeah that's the main thing i'm just sort of a little bit annoyed that i've been without my index for an extended period of time anyway that that's really the main thing uh, that's been happening these past three months it's a little bit boring i know i don't really know what well, else to say too gary that's not good especially with your, <laughs> your space sims and things you like to play how's it yeah how's it, yeah how's it cope with it without the index <laughs> well yeah i mean i have been using the quest to a lot more for PC. I mean, I use the Quest 2 pretty much for PC VR stuff anyway. It's other members of my family that really use it for the standalone kind of stuff, honestly. But for me, I've been playing Elite in that. I've been actually, I've been looking into um, Grand Theft Auto. That's the last video on my channel, is Grand Theft Auto 5 again. I thought I'd get back into that because somebody, uh, well, several people have actually commented that uh, there is this um, vision. There's this mod basically that makes that gives a, a layer of realism over Grand Theft Auto Five. So Luke I got Ross into mod? that. Uh, no, the the so you've got the Luke Ross mod to make yeah. it into VR. Then you've got this right. natural vision mod. It's called, and okay. you can then actually put that on top of the VR and play it with this ultra real, realistic aesthetic mm. in VR as well. And it's not actually as demanding as you might think in, in VR, honestly. Um, and I was doing that with my Quest 2. So I've been using it for all of these other things. Microsoft Flight Simulator um, as well, Elite Dangerous, all, all my usual ones. So I've been getting back into the Quest 2 and really trying to dial in my settings because I've ne never really done that. I've just sort of accepted it for what it is on PC VR. But when I've wanted to play PC VR, I've really used my index. And that's my, my main sort of way to really dial in settings so it's been interesting to do it for those reasons if nothing else really um but yeah i mean that, that's pretty much all i've got to say other than i have been playing a little bit of well actually i've been getting into a little bit of unity i'll go through this phase oh. I'll go through this phase every probably six months or, or to a year where I think I'm going to make something in Unity. I'm going to do Immersed something. Immersed Robot Productions. Series. Yes. <laughs> um, but nice. I, I always get... So I've got to the point now where I've sort of got... Because 
what I've done in the past is I've used like a template to sort of start working on a VR on some kind of VR content. And what I've kind of never VR content do you want to do? I don't know. This is the thing, Sebastian. <laughs> I honestly okay. don't know. I don't okay, know what okay. I'm doing. <laughs> um, but the, what, what I've been doing is I've always started with a template and I've never learned from the ground up how to get all of these things, these VR, uh, like the VR rig, the VR camera and stuff like that set up from scratch. And I thought I'm going to take a step back. I might not progress quite so quickly, but I'm going to take a step back and learn it from the, from the ground. And nice. I've done that and I've got things working and things are sort of progressing. I'm sort of feel like I've got through the wall and then I've not touched it for two weeks. And now all of a sudden I'm thinking, am I ever going to touch it again? This is what happens every six months. I'll go through these phases, but um, anyway, it's pretty exciting, right? I mean, to, 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 to try unity. So it, it is, I have yeah. also tried it. Actually in my past life, I was a programmer <laughs> yeah. and um, yeah, it was my main job. And I also, when I started with VR, I tried unity and, um, try to make a game or just to check it out how it works and i was so fascinated it's just a whole new level to make something and then to step into it i, I really feel that this is this is magic i mean we know that vr is magic right but when you make something you make a world or you design something and then you put it on and you step into it and try the stuff wow right Yeah, absolutely. And, but then also it gives you a taste of just how many problems and issues there are <laughs> with creating VR content. Honestly, this was eye opening because I, I, I yeah. sort of start thinking, I take a step back and I think maybe I shouldn't do a VR project is my first project. I should just do something flat because there, there seem to be far less issues. I'm not saying it's easy but by any any uh, stretch of the imagination. But what I'm saying is I think it's, it's um, easier to create something that is more coherent than starting with a VR project where all of these problems start popping up that are... Uh, absolutely like unique to VR kind of right, stuff. Right. Um, the interactions and stuff like that. It's just, yeah, there's, a, it's just a nightmare. But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll probably, I don't know if I'll go back into it this time, but I'll probably talk about it again in six months because I'll be back <laughs> into it then. Okay. Great. Great. Good to hear from you. Okay. Yeah. So let's hear about uh, Steve. What did you do in the last few months? Yeah, quite a bit, really. And uh, I'll just keep talking while you uh, nip off, Seb. No one will notice. <laughs> um, I'll maybe just start with a couple of games I've been playing, actually. Um, one, I'm going to call it maybe a space sim, and that is No Man's Sky. And uh, oh, wow. this was because of one of your videos, Gary. It kind of influenced me to try it. And then my friend um, bought it as well. And we've just literally just been playing that for the past like, two <laughs> weeks or more. And... It's really in depth, actually. I was quite surprised. I wasn't prepared for yeah. how amazing it is and how in depth it is. Like, just, just the crafting mechanics and just you know you you have to do everything, don't you? Like, literally, you have to gather so much stuff to then create other things and uh, you know and just to be able to like fly across literally the entire galaxy or whatever it is. In fact, it's massive, isn't it? It's it's huge. It's a yeah, massive yeah. world. I think people yeah. ever. No one will ever, I don't think, completing it is, is in the sort of remit of the game. It's not like that, is it? It just goes on forever. Yeah. Um, and just be able to, these planets, be able to land, uh, you know, your spacecraft on these planets and walk around. I was blown away with that. I really was. So I've really, really been enjoying that. Uh, using the Reaver mainly for that, actually. Um, and I did try the Arrow in that, which has just blew my socks off. But, uh, I mean, yeah, incredible. They The, um, really just quickly, cool. Steve, on that, on, on No Man's Sky, I will say, like, at the beginning, it's a bit overwhelming because you've got so many things to collect, so many things How to craft. It? Yeah, <laughs> but as it goes on, that becomes far, far easier. That's almost secondary oh, that's later on. You don't need to, to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but luckily, my, my friend, he loves games like this. He loves having to collect things and, you know, like a grind out sort of, get, you know, getting materials mm. and things. He was... Oh my been God, like I, I really hate those bit. games. It's so yeah, overwhelming. Yeah, like it's incredibly hate, overwhelming. I would hate it, right? Like like crafting and grinding. Oh my God. Yeah, it is complicated, actually. Um, oh, but I don't have you know, patience. But yeah, but there's some there's a rewarding factor there when you've collected all your rocks and you you know your specific plants and <laughs> and then you 
you, know, oh you, get, you get that extra booster for your spaceship so you can go off to another planet and then you land there and it's like oh my god look at that massive animal and you try and feed it and it attacks you and you've got to run back to you and then there's, there's a storm like a like solar storm or something and you think oh my god like this rain is acidic it's it's actually affecting my health so i've got to go back to space everything oh, is trying to kill you in this game like everything <laughs> is there to kill you and, and if gra- those of yeah. you who those of you who tried you know played this game in the early days they may remember what a simpler times they used to be when the game was <laughs> just released it was just that you have your ship you fly to some planets oh, you collect boring. carbon and you buy stuff that's it like it was like that. You'd be right with that but <laughs> so how, how much time do you have to spend for for this game to really get into it that's that's my Five main thousand question hours. Yeah, yeah. You need, yeah. You need that's, to that's what I think, right? In. That's what I think. Like, and I don't have like the um, five thousand hours. <laughs> no, to be fair, actually, I think I've got about thirty, twenty-five, thirty hours already in it in the past uh-huh. like, few weeks. With my, but I've been playing it uh, with a friend who's really into it as well, and he's been helping me along. Otherwise, I would have been stuck. There was loads of times I was going, "What am I doing next?" Yeah, you need mm. to go in that, collect this, and then do that, and then check this on your wrist. Oh, okay, thanks. And if it wasn't for all that. I probably would still be in it now, stuck. <laughs> like, but, it, I, you know, coming from Elite Dangerous, for me personally, this is like, I mean, I don't know how you feel about this guy, actually, because you're a massive Elite Dangerous fan. But yeah. for me, it was more absorbing. It was more immersive. It was just a beautiful world. It was more taxing on my computer. Actually, that's yeah. one thing that really, really humbled me. I thought, yeah, I've got a 3090, 10900K. I've got a really nice card. Ultra, 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 straight into it. Steam crashed right away. <laughs> I was like, right, <laughs> best not do that. And then obviously I tried the DLSS, uh, you know, or the, is it the, is it DLSS or is it the FDR? Yeah. FSR, that, well, sorry. they've got both. They've got both now. So you can try DLSS uh, and then they've got the FSR in there as well. Well, um, I, as soon as I enabled that, that was amazing like the frame rate was beautifully smooth everything just i mean obviously the, yeah i could definitely tell the resolution was slightly less but i mean yeah. it wasn't too bad at all and that excites me for microsoft flight simulator which is going to get dlss as well um in the near future so yeah, tracking right yeah um say again um microsoft flight simulator will have eye tracking and foveated rendering that's something else that's something else yeah you did, i know i know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, NIS scaler, basically like scaling, okay. uh, you know, uh, which is uh, makes well, frame rate a lot, lot easier to be able to render all these scenes. It's very, very cool. But yeah, eye tracking is going to be a, that's a massive bit of news. That's huge, like ridiculously huge, mind blowing, huge. But um, but yeah, No Man's Sky, been playing VTOL VR. I don't know if anyone's tried that, but it's like a combat, it's like DCS, take all the hard bits out of it, and then it runs at 90 frames per second. Uh, and yeah, the, the graphics are a bit crap. It doesn't matter because it literally is so smooth. It's just such a great game. It uses uh, motion controllers, doesn't it? I think it that, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember that because that's quite uh, that's been out for quite a few years now. But a lot of people, it gets brought up all the time. People talk about VTOL. I was quite surprised. The weapon systems and some of the aircraft are actually quite. I wouldn't say in depth. That's ridiculous. If I said that you know it meant it that would be i'd have no subscribers but uh <laughs> but it is it is fairly decent in terms of the weapon systems they've simplified real life weapon systems of, of aircraft and just made it really easy and you you know you touch everything and stuff and it's yeah that was quite cool so been enjoying a few obviously obviously been playing flight sims and stuff but you all know that so i'm not going to tell you that because that's <laughs> obvious so just the You're other right. stuff and maybe one other game that i've been playing a lot and I say this probably every time. Walk about mini golf. Oh, I love, I love that it. Game so oh, wow. it's so good. I didn't know you it's, started it's playing so that. It's so oh, good. I love it. It's become a little bit of a. It's quite sad, really, but you know, I don't go out and have a beer as much as I used to. So often, I just end up meeting with friends in uh, mini uh, walk about mini golf and just having a laugh, just playing golf for a couple of hours mm. and having a beer. And you it's, have friends it's like, in VR, like like your old friends, or is it like VR friends? Because like my quite, my, I've, my, I've a, my normal friends, they don't know about VR. Aww, yeah, VR. I've got a few, not as many as I'd like, but you know, I've got a few that they really like okay. VR and uh, okay. not flight sim. I've got no sort of flight sim nerds apart from uh, my Discord. I, I consider some of my Discord members, like Discord members, friends like uh, Sven <laughs> and Eva. They're not Discord, Discord friends; yeah. they're actual friends. I love them to bits, and one day we're going to meet and have a beer. Absolutely. Uh, but in, like hopefully also all that. of us all of us are going to medium yes. real, reality like talking about that did, i've also been doing quite a bit of community <laughs> flights as well where people get together and we go flying 
uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator and had like 50, 60 people flying with me all over the world, different locations. That's really good fun as well. So I really enjoy oh. that. That's pretty cool. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's brilliant. But I, I, I mean, literally, I'll just uh, a few things because a lot's been happening, really, as it always has. I seem to have a lot to say. But uh, I've checked out the Reverb G2 version 2. Uh, I've been checking that out for the past sort of three weeks or so. I've got this headset here. And I'm, I'm very, very, uh, very impressed with some of the areas that just the little areas that they've made better, just particularly the face gasket, obviously the facial interface. The field of view now is so much better with the reverb of uh, G2 V2. <laughs> and because but you're. Didn't you so use the Frankenfoff mod before? The MRTV Frankenfoff mod I've never gave used it to that, you though. already since last year, if you were checking out MRTV. <laughs> No, I, well, send it. I'd be very intrigued to try it, but I just think uh, I, it's, I, you it's can't get now. any close to the lenses and yeah, that. Yeah, now they've done a fantastic job now. Really I mean, good. it's super, super close. And what that means is the sweet spot is a little bit, I mean, it's not massively better, but I definitely can tell because I did compare yeah. it uh, in Half Life Alex in the same scene, looking at a bit of text. And I could definitely see what, you know, you kind of like look at the text and move, move your eyes left and right. And then you can really tell the sweet spot. I'm doing it yeah. now. I think so. I did that because I, I, when I had the Reverb G2, I did try that. So I basically tried it without the face gasket and then tried that Frankenfov, Sebastian's patented <laughs> copyright Frankenfov. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, exactly that. <laughs> and, but, but I did notice like the sweet spot is it, still an issue. It's not, I think it's, there's no getting around it, but it was, it was better. And yeah, I mean, I'm interested. I've got to say all these problems I'm having with my index at the minute, I'm thinking maybe I should just get a reverb G2. Again. You should, you should give it a second chance. Mm. Really? You yeah, had it too short. You, you, it really once is. you get used to it, it's tough to go back to like the index. Like you, you love the index, and I, and I understand it, but I couldn't use it again because I'm so used to this high resolution. Like if I look yeah. through the index now, I feel like oh, oh my goodness, it's, it's so blocky. It's it's so much screen door effect. Mark, yes. Microsoft Flight Simulator, the Reverb G2. I mean, blew the index it's away a, yeah, in yeah. my yeah. opinion. I'm um, sorry. But, what about but, Pyamax? Oh yeah, it's. It's pretty good, I must say. Like, I'm, um, yeah, I will talk about this when I talk about my week. Oh, okay. 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 Because <laughs> talking that, to, talking to I haven't realized. Yeah. I haven't realized we can talk about hardware. I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but we like to do it here. Something happened. <laughs> something happened before, you know, all of that. And I was actually working. You know, the kind of the promise that I gave to all of you uh, during the last episode of the previous season? Yeah. Do you remember what it was? So you, I got You want to try all the all the headsets basically. Yes. So I upgraded my graphics card and I uh, made a resolution yes. to start expanding to PC VR headsets because I'm finally ready and I'm delivering on that promise. Um uh, I got I know you had your review done. So um <laughs> I'm also working on reviewing Pimax 8KX. Oh, you uh, have it there now? Oh yeah, I've had it for oh, a while. Perfect. Unfortunately, that's great. Like, yes, and that's the thing. That's this exciting project I was working right. on. Completely dropped it. I, I'm not, you know, proud of it. I don't think Got I had it. a choice, but it's there. It's it's. I've already tested it and everything, and I was so excited to start um, working on that review because our para was the first one, and now it's Pimax 8KX. So this is going to be my next big project. Like a spoiler <laughs> well probably one of my next videos will be about it is exciting it's an exciting topic i think mm -hmm. really like i have to i had to re i had to change my mind i must honestly tell you i, I really like i it. think that's that is why i <laughs> said we disagreed uh when, yeah, when yeah, i got right. my 8KX, i can remember exactly yeah exactly, do you remember yeah. i think I, it's, I remember. i've got this, the, the newer version with it with right, the dmas right. speakers and i was like really you don't like it so yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I, it's I, I totally review. i totally get it now i really get it i like it now as well mm-hmm it's a right. phenomenal headset. I love the AKX. Like literally, I've I've been using it all week this week in IL2, yeah. which is a combat sim, and it's just it really is. It's incredible. I'm very intrigued to hear what you've got to say about it. Actually, from your right. point of view, yeah, yeah, very cool. Are you gonna? You're not gonna say anything, are you? Are you gonna give us a little sneak, couple of words from, or for me? Yeah, from, yeah, from yes, Tatiana. Tatiana yeah. yeah. So <laughs> when I try it for the first time, going from the Kind of a really tiny <laughs> FOV. Yes. Oh, it's not tiny, I guess. You know, our power was tiny, but Quest was just small <laughs> FOV. Going to the freaking Pimax, that's like the first time I put it on. I wish I was recording myself because I went, oh, like, yeah. it was <laughs> it's surprising. Out. It is surprising. 
That's why I did a raw reaction video. Out. Yeah. Like I had to, yeah. I just didn't expect it was this big. Just visually looking at those two lens. Oh, oh, I don't have it here right now. It's actually still connected to my PC. That's why it's not in my on my shelf. But just like looking at those lenses, they're ginormous and putting the headset on, I wanted to play all the games that I had just to see what they will look like with this enormous FOV. And No Man's Sky is actually the one that I also tried. Oh, I wicked. I haven't tried that yet with uh, No yeah. Man's Sky. I bet that's incredible. Oh, you but are. I'm going to do it now. I'm, I'm going to get off. <laughs> <laughs> you are on that planet. Like, you are in that world. I, yeah. You know, I think that there's different priorities for different VR gamers. Some people prefer refresh rate over FOV. Some people prefer FOV over, I don't know, resolution. Like, there's always, like, different priorities. And I think FOV is like the, the game changer for me. Like wow, maybe cool. I would Good even have, like that. maybe I would like agree to have a smaller resolution if I have this immersion. Like You need to try an arrow I, next and then you'll be like, oh, I don't know now. <laughs> I'm really confused. That, yeah, yeah, that's that a tough is, thing. The arrow looks so sharp. Be, oh my God, it's... That, it, that was going to be the next one, but I wanted to finish the review. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, right. Sharpness Talk is not... Sharpness is not the strongest suit, I think, of Pimax. Right, yeah. I don't think it was. Like, I could see that. Like, you no should check the how... arrow. I can get you in touch with the arrow people if you want. Uh, the thing uh, with Pimax, yeah. it's got that. It's got. It's <laughs> got a very it. high. It it's got a very high resolution, but it's sort of stretched out over that large yes. field of view. That's the thing. Exactly. With the limiting factor exactly. with it. That's a point. It However, has a very high resolution display. But... It does have a very good sweet spot. Uh, better than any other, yeah. I think, an L-based headset, um, which really helps, I think, with the perceived clarity of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so... it's, not, it's not massive, but it's bigger than the Reverb and Quest, I think. I felt like when, when I tried the Pimax, I tried the, uh, it was a few years ago, it was like the 5K Plus, I think it was back then. Many things have improved since then. Yeah, they have. Yeah, the, um, but yeah, I mean, the, I think the lenses in terms of like the sweet spot and stuff like that, there was no issues there. I, th I felt like it was really, really good uh, with that, yeah. So right. actually, as we're talking about Pimax, I've been trying out these things. Can you see that on the screen? Ah, yeah. Oh, are they the sword? Yeah, sword controllers. Yeah. Sword controllers. yeah. Uh, and Man, I've made my I, little review. I have introduced you to Pimax, and now you got stuff that I didn't, that I don't have. <laughs> mine, mine. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, though, um, my review was a bit was a mix, well, mixed feelings with these, uh, to be honest, because they look. I mean, look at them; they look incredible. They really are. I think if I was a seven-year-old kid, I'd be like, you know, it makes me feel like a seven-year-old kid. I said that in my review because I just think they look amazing. They look so cool. They look a little bit like the PS5. Uh, yeah. Oh, they remind yeah, me of that. they do. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, they suck or... And I, I, well, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, but, well, this is an independent podcast. You can say everything. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's one massive issue with these. Can you see what it is? They suck. Yeah, they, they suck. They, they, <laughs> no they have a trackpad. Oh, no drumsticks. Yeah, no, yeah, track yeah. That's, that's at all. Yeah, that's uh, bad. And, and also the the trackpad is absolutely humongous. So when you're kind of like saying uh, when you're walking around, you want to go forwards. I've got a, even I've got fairly large hands, and I can't quite reach the end of oh, that yeah. trackpad. So after a while, it, it gets old very quickly, which is such a shame because I actually really like these. I love how like the light comes on as well, like at the bottom there. Can you see that? How cool oh, is that? Oh, that's like PlayStation it's... controller. It reminds me of that PlayStation yes. thing. Right. So I've, I think they're great, but they're just, oh, they drop the ball on this They're so great, but they just Personally. suck. <laughs> 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 well, I, you know, I've been using them in VTOL VR and, and, you know, a few other games. I've dropped these, by the way, a couple of times. I even punched my own computer by accident. And, there's, you know, so they're very well made. I have to say they're very well made. But for me, the, the thumbstick is just too much of a problem for me. I just, you know, I don't know why they were th what they were thinking with that. Um, so I, I do prefer the index controllers. The haptic feedback, by the way, isn't as good either as, as probably even a Quest, um, which is a shame. So they nearly did it. But for me personally, wasn't too impressed with them, really. I mean, yeah. you know, for, for, for... thing is, though, I'm not really a VR gamer like you guys. So you'd be you'd be even more critical than me. But um how but many been, hours I've, did you play No Man's Sky again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are a gamer. Accept it. You are. That's true. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Fair play. I mean, 
No Man's Sky has drawn me right in, but I don't really. That's not a game, is it? It's a space sim. Do you think? Or do you think it's a you training could, program? Yeah. yeah, it's like a space program. <laughs> like you build your own space station, you craft your own weapons, and all that. It's a grinding simulator, is what it is. It is. But, at the beginning. Oh, oh my god, <laughs> it's nothing for me then, really. <laughs> no, at the beginning. Said, no, 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 no. No, said. Stay it's, away from it. It's for it me, gets right? a lot. It's not like that all the way through. First few okay. hours, it's a little bit. <laughs> anyway, go on. <laughs> So yeah. I, just, I'm going to actually have a shameless plug here, by the way. I've got some, I got a dis really good discount because uh, I've got here, I've got some Pimax uh, lens inserts. <laughs> got so much stuff. I've got uh, some Reverb G2 and Quest 2 and all loads of uh, lens inserts from VR Rock. Some of them, I haven't, I haven't actually reviewed these yet, but anyone who wants 20% off any of those lens inserts, I have got a code. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to shamelessly plug it on this podcast. So sorry, Seb. But, no problem. Uh, yeah. Um, I so I'm just going to bang, bang them in the chat, really. And if, if you want to use them, feel free. And I will. I do get a bit of a kickback, by the way. I do get a kickback from that. I just want to make that very clear to everybody. But, That's okay. You, know, you deserve it. <laughs> I, got, I got an email from VR Rock today, actually. I'm going to put... Can I give it a code? <laughs> <laughs> Have you really? They yes, also, yeah, they also connected with me. Today. They also said, well, like, yeah. Okay, well, put them all in. And whoever <laughs> you like best podcast, use their code. <laughs> I haven't tried them yet, so I don't know. Yeah yeah <laughs> good but yeah I, I, one more thing i'll quickly yeah. say, i could say loads of things but i'll say one more thing Lots and of that, things is happening. the vario aero distortion profile uh, they've oh, improved it I, as you I know i want to talk about uh, talk about it too it's good Wait, i tell you what let's just chat about that together another time after we've uh, gone through our weeks because that that would be quite a cool thing to talk uh, discuss yeah. actually so yeah, yeah that's was... me i'm done okay I'm good <laughs> <laughs> great yeah, okay, cool. Then I will tell you about what happened at MRTV. So, yeah, lots of things happened, as you probably also um, yeah, recognized. MRTV is not a one-man show anymore, and that's so cool. MRTV is now a team, a team of three. So that is so amazing. That's so exciting. And the team is now me and um, Marco and William. Probably you have already seen some videos of them. And I... I simply thought, why just have one guy with such a German accent if you can have three? <laughs> so now, three <laughs> guys with a German accent, I will tell you about what VR is interesting about. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm super excited. So MRTV is growing. Um, I couldn't be more excited. It's so fun to work together with as a team now to make uh, videos together. Um, yeah, simply to, to grow. And MRTV is growing. This is only the start. I'm super ambitious with the channel. And things are looking really, really good. So, yeah, I'm excited. I really hope that people outside there are excited too. And uh, I know that you will be once you get to know Marco and William more. They are amazing guys. I know them from the German VR community. They have their own channels and they're still running them. And they are great. They are super good, super good guys. And yeah, they also enjoy, yeah, like talking about VR and doing that in an independent way. So they just fit to MRTV, MRTV very well. Yeah, so that's good. What are your thoughts about MRTV uh, being coming so cool. a team now? <laughs> that's so cool. I was just curious, like, did you interview people to join your team or did you have the people in mind that you thought would be a great addition to MRTV? Oh, oh wow. I, I took this very seriously, of course. So I, uh, well, I get, I know them already and I I wanted to, to win them over to join MRTV because I know that these guys are fantastic. So yeah, I, I invited them to the headquarter and we talked a lot. We talk, talked a lot. lot of uh, we talked for a long long time, and yeah, I simply wanted to win them over f to join MRTV, and, I, and they I, did, and I'm very proud of that. They are really great. They're, I remember seeing one of the guys. I, I yeah. sorry, I don't know which one is Marco, which. He was on the, the channel moment. before. We talked yeah, about the, yeah. the arrow. Yeah, yeah, arrow. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I remember exactly. seeing that video, and that was that was yeah. great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it seems like a, a great addition. They are. They are. I they really say, are. William, is it William the other guy? Yeah, William and Marco. Yes. Yeah. Um, his last video. Hopefully, you can hear me right, because uh, yes. Melissa, my partner, she's got the hair dry going. So if it's too loud, same. <laughs> I'll microphone off. Um. His last video with the PS5, yeah, that was a great video. Very, oh, very, very entertaining. Uh, very, very informative. You could tell he did his homework. 
he unlike did. sometimes when I do a video, I just kind of do it with, <laughs> with emotion and not actual, you know, I need yeah. to be a bit more concise about stuff. And I know yeah, really. that, that's just they, how I they, am, but he was like really on it. Exactly. And yeah, no, cool. It's yeah, really, it's it. a bit different as well. Like they all have their own styles, right? He, he's, he wrote the script and everything is very well thought through. And I love that. So they are great additions and, and I'm just very proud to have them on the channel. Yeah, so so this is this is really cool. And uh, congratulations. Yeah, I think so. Thank That's you. That's a huge step. It is. It, it, it's a totally different feeling. You know, before I was just on my own doing my thing. And now working together with a team, it's a totally different kind of dynamic. And yeah, I'm happy about it. So, was it easy to transition to the teamwork rather than the one man show kind oh, of thing? Well, it, it is it is different. It is it does feel really different, I must say. But I'm I'm happy about it because you know, I simply could tell that before when I was alone, there were so many videos that I simply could not do because I was doing everything by myself. It was just too much. Like I have so many things to do with all the hardware that I'm getting, right? And I, I simply didn't have any time to do more things. And I also like to play games, right? But I simply couldn't do it. But now with a three-man team, well... We can also talk about games now and probably uh, people have already um, found out that we're also now like checking out games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it's, so it's kind of interesting. Are, are you the boss then, Sebastian? And do these guys know you're the boss? That's the most important thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they know. They know that I'm the boss, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. It's like on this podcast. We're all terrified of Sebastian, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just hope to make them feel like they are they are part of the team and and they are and it's just going to get um, yeah bigger and better. So uh, I'm excited about this and that is that, without a doubt like a huge a huge change for MRTV and I hope that everyone enjoys it. That there's more content now from MRTV and most probably every day there's a, there's a video out now and yeah I, I hope that you get to know the other guys they are really good guys and give them a chance and yeah I hope that you enjoy the German accents more <laughs> no yeah right so this this is really cool this is really good yeah other than that I had been checking out hardware of course and um, yeah, I checked out the um, the Reverb G2 version 2 as well, and I liked it. However, I must say that I don't think that um, HP like delivered on all all the claims. They they claimed that also the the tracking would have improved, but I couldn't feel that at all. I'm not sure. What are your thoughts about that, Steve? Like, I I didn't think that they have improved the 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 tracking volume, for example. Did you feel they have improved the tracking volume? I think they have. Really? I really do. Yeah, absolutely. Really? But oh the goodness. thing is, though, For me, the like, thing no, is, zero. <laughs> I got a, I got a, I got a comment on my, uh, obviously, video which made me laugh because he, he said, "Dude, you didn't try and throw a grenade." Yeah, I was but like, that worked, oh. that worked bef before as well." <laughs> it's like, and I just thought, I don't, I didn't even think about that because I'm, yeah. look, I'm thinking about tracking whilst I'm sat messing around with flight you know in a cockpit and what i was right. thinking and it's definitely better for this i i definitely think it is is when sometimes with the old g2 controls if i would do that and look up well not quite look up kind of keep looking ahead if that makes sense and, and do that with the controller to switch a switch on the overhead panel of a 737 which is very very geeky um the tracking <laughs> sometimes it would start doing this and then kind of disappear and then suddenly the controller would just go wee past me like that but now it doesn't do that anymore. And I tried really hard to do that. And it, okay. it's just that that cone, that's like, it's not a massive amount, but for me, that was enough for me to notice. And I even tested it with my old ones and it did the same thing again. So mm -hmm. that, okay. that was, I was quite, I mean, to be honest, is that going to be enough for most people? Probably not, because I think if you're going to be throwing a grenade and God knows what and doing things that are below your, you know, your hips and things like that, maybe then it would lose tracking still. But yeah, for me personally, does. I okay. found it but to be quite you know, definitely better. Okay. Yeah, good to know. Good to know that there's different opinions. Like like for me I I didn't feel a difference. I thought before it was all right already but just um the tracking volume is not as good as the Quest 2 and I can still tell you the version 2 is still not as good as the Quest 2 in terms of tracking volume. 
So in my opinion, uh, they didn't really change much, but they did change the, the gaskets and it's better now. So you get a better FOV and you get a better sweet spot. So that is good. And also the cable is the new cable. So people who had problems with with the AMD main boards, now they won't have it. And that's a good thing. So it is still a fantastic headset. It, it's very close to the Arrow in terms of visuals and it's no, much it's cheaper. No, it's not. No, yeah, it's okay. Not. Uh, so, wow, we totally disagree here on lots of things here today. Yeah, no, it's but not. No, no, it isn't. I don't no, think it is. Well, I, I really think it is. <laughs> I, I really think, like, it's it's really, like, for for being so much cheaper, like, like the Arrow, it's not, like, 2,000 euro better in terms of visuals. I don't, I really no, don't it's not. So. No, it's not 2,000 euros, but yeah, then... It is better, nothing... I agree. But it's not like but 2,000 they, euro they, better. They could charge 10,000 if they want to because nothing else <laughs> out there has the has anything close to the aero, in my opinion. So they yeah, can charge I, I agree want. with that. I agree. It looks really good. I totally agree with you, yes. I do think, though, however, I just want to say, you know, in yep. fairness, in Half-Life Alex in the G2, it's so incredible. In Half-Life Alex in the aero, it's actually still quite good as well. So it's like, I don't notice the difference in clarity so much in, a, in gaming environments, but in a sim, when you're looking at really tiny text and cockpits and things like that, and you're looking far out, say in DCS, and you're looking at a MiG-29, you go, hang on, that's a MiG-29, that's not a Su-27, or it's not a F-16. I can tell what aircraft it is that I'm looking at without labels, and the G2, I've got no chance at all in okay. being able to think yeah. of what they are. Yeah, right, I think right. that's that's where we we're thinking there, because for gaming, it's I wouldn't buy an Aero for gaming. I'd buy a G2 or, or, or a Quest yeah. or an Index. Like for, for, normal, for, for normal consumers, the G2 yeah. is it makes more oh, sense. Yeah. The thing is, totally the, right. the, yeah. the Aero, it's... it's a Simmer's headset, really, ideally. I mean, that's yeah. the I, the perfect uh, combination, isn't it? If you, you yeah. are a Simmer, either a racer or a flight sim person, I think that's where the Aero will shine. Um, whereas I think the Reverb is still, because it's 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 bundled with motion controllers and things like that, it's exactly. still sort of doing all of exactly. these other things as well. Exactly. P people are getting really confused with the G2 and the Aero. Uh, and I must admit, the video that, you, that Marco put out uh, on your channel, I was so angry with that video. <laughs> no, no, man, I totally, oh I totally God. agree with Marco about that because really, no. there's no really for for these things that Marco mentioned there. Yes, the Reverb G2 is better. Like sound, yes, the Reverb G2 is better. Price, without a doubt, the Reverb G2 is better. And I cannot tell the other three things, but I agree. Yeah, but I let, totally agree. Here's an analogy for you, right? And I, I've done, I've said this before. Imagine a Ferrari, right, which is like two million pounds. And then imagine yeah. a cheap little Fiesta you've just bought for 500 pounds. Yeah. I could give you five things that that Fiesta could do better than the Ferrari. Does okay. that make it a better car? No, no you know? but he didn't say it's a better headset. But he said like, okay, for those five things, the Reverb G2 is better. And that is a bit sad for, that's a bit sad for, for the Aero because it's so much more expensive. Yeah, you know, but, yeah, like, the only reason the only reason why it's expensive is for that like insane two hundred mile an hour top speed of the Ferrari, which yeah, the Fiesta and, can't do, and, and, it and just that is, one thing, and that absolutely is absolutely perfectly. I, I agree, I agree. I also I love That's what you're how for. I, I love I really love the visuals, but that doesn't make the video of Marco wrong, where it says like, okay, with these five things, this headset, the Reverb G two, is just better. <laughs> no, no it's, really. It's, it's, it's a misrepresentation of the era, in my so. opinion. I thought it was. But I don't want to get yeah. too, obviously. But I do feel <laughs> that, you know, you, you yeah. could say that about anything. Like, you know, for, most cars can do 100 miles an hour. But to get to 150, you have to spend about three times as much. To get a car that can do 200 miles an hour, you have yeah. to spend 10 times as much. Because but that still, technology but is still, not if in that, the um, for, If in that Ford Fiesta, the, the audio, uh, the sound is better than in, in the Ferrari... It's not wrong to say that. <laughs> no, it's not wrong, but it, it makes people think that, wow, actually, my God, that's really embarrassing for the era because the G2 is better, but it's, which it isn't. It's, but it's, but it, it is. Really in these five things, it is better. Yeah, but I, I could I could literally think of 10 things that the Aero is better than the G2, and it will be. Because like what? things like software, for instance, like the Vario-based software runs on your GPU instead of the archaic Windows Mixed Reality, which means that you get... You get about twice the amount of visuals, if not more, and you get about 20, uh, well, no, about 10 frames per second more in that headset, which has just never happened before. We, we've always had every VR headset we've had that's got high resolution 
cost frames apart yeah. from with the aero and that's because it actually hasn't got a much higher resolution it's all about those lenses and about the um the the industry leading software of the Vario base software which yeah is but, used the, the, but the but the industry Force. leading software cannot do motion reprojection it will soon it will soon <laughs> yeah but you is see? it possible to have a fight <laughs> I, over over there so yeah, know, let's come, come here come here come here i'm a black belt in taekwondo no, come you're on. too big <laughs> I've seen you in VR and you're like that big. So, yeah, no, but, but 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 really, like like think about this. Like it's um, if you get the Reverb G2, well, you will get like motion reprojection that really works very well. And I mean, you made some videos about it, how good it is. And oh for yes, the, of course. For the for the two thousand four hundred euro um, Aero, you don't get that yet. But yeah. because the performance so, is so, so, so good. Still, so still, I, no. I am so the, still, I must literally. say, I'm, I'm, totally, I'm, I'm totally backing Marco's video here. I mm -hmm. think he's totally right. And I don't think mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a misrepresentation. I, I think that, er, that uh, Vario still just have, has to stand up for those problems that they still have. Like, I also love the headset. I'm using it, right, because it has the best, best visuals. But for that kind of money, it is kind of interesting to see that the Reverb G2 does so many things better. <laughs> so... Yeah. I, 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 I can't agree with you getting angry about Marco's video. I think he really did a good job on that one. Okay, well, we could disagree with that yeah, one. I, I, I think it's I'm great to have multiple reviewers, you know? I mean, that's what yeah. it's all about. If every reviewer had exactly the same thing to exactly. say about one same headset, what kind of, you know, what no. would be the point of, of having multiple reviews? I think yeah. this is amazing that you are having this fight. Keep going. The thing exactly. is, you know, with, yeah, exactly. without Anthony, we haven't got Anthony here. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, someone needs to be the Anthony. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, really, it's good. So now I don't have to fight with Anthony, but I will fight with you now, starting from now. <laughs> no, the good thing is also we, we will still... Yeah, have like um, like a respectful disagreements, right? It's good. It's of really course. good to discuss. That's what it's all that's... about. It'd be boring if we agreed all the time. Exactly. So exactly. Boring. Yeah, right. Yeah. I disagree. <laughs> I think it'd be absolutely fantastic, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sebastian, this is like not... the... <laughs> mixed reality TV will turn into a mixed opinions TV. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, but, it, but it's, it's, it's like the, really the Monty good. Python sketch. I want a three minute <laughs> argument. No, I want a five minute argument. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, okay, cool. So yeah, I will totally feature Marco's video again. So for everyone to have another close look at it to, to understand what, what we talk about here. <laughs> so yeah. Yep. So how did we talk about this now? We, uh, I was talking about, um, I don't know. Uh, anyways, Reverb, about my train of thought. But did you Is talk it... about Pimax yet? No, no. Yeah, exactly. There oh, we yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was talking about the Reverb G2. Exactly. So yeah, I... I think it's uh, the Reverb G2 is an amazing headset. However, I also don't think they have improved on on the <laughs> on the tracking. It's still the same like before, in my humble opinion. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I still think that um, the Quest 2 is much better. And for the Reverb G3, they really have to improve the tracking a lot, because it would be like um, really sad if if for the Reverb G3 they wouldn't have at least the same good tracking like the Quest 2 had like uh, years ago. So that's something they have to improve. Anyways, it's still an amazing headset and for the money, it's like, wow, it's, it's still my go-to headset if it was about this kind of money. All right, then, yeah, I, I, I gave, um, I tried the, the final unit of the Pimax 8KX and I must say, I must revise my first opinion because you can remember like two years ago, I tried the Pimax 8KX, the, the pre-production unit, and I didn't like it because you could only do 75 hertz in the, in the native resolution mode. And now I tried it again with uh, 90 hertz with my 3080. And yeah, I, I really enjoyed the experience. It's really cool. It's a huge FOV. I didn't feel the, um, um, the problems with um, distortions anymore as much as I did it before. Like before I couldn't use it in, in large mode, now I could. And if I put it down to normal mode, basically I just have a huge FOV that's bigger than everything on the market and, and I don't have any problems with distortion. So I really have to revise my opinion about the 8KX. And as I said in my video, I am going to do a full review about it. And from what I feel right now, I must, um, I might even recommend it to people. Yeah, it's it's uh, pretty exciting <laughs> now. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I actually watched your review. I I, I watched your review because the I knew that one. I was like, no, 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 the new one, the new the, one. Okay, my the first impression video. Yeah. The the yeah the, the one, I, 
two weeks ago through yeah, I don't right. Remember. Yeah, right. Um essentially I haven't made mine yet, but I can maybe share a little bit Please in a while. Do. I wonder what you will think about it. Because I was completely, you know, shocked the first time I tried it. I had this euphoria. I was working and I was thinking about playing with Pimax. Like it was actually like this. I felt like a kid, you know, with a new toy that just right. Um, like I have this super new toy that Quest Two doesn't even sound doesn't even seem like you know, the the headset I want to use anymore because I I would get spoiled with this FOV. But then I think I started noticing you know, like other things that would bother me a little. Like for example. Oh, this was interesting. <laughs> oh, no. Um, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, but you cannot see me. Okay. Sucks. Oh, you've, um, you've, you've paused. You've, you have paused. That's amazing, yeah. Sam. How are you doing that? Yeah. Very impressive. It looks funny, right? Like, you look slightly annoyed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about um, VR flat sim guy. <laughs> he hates me now. I'm surprised I'm no, still no. here, actually. I thought I'm going to unpause. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, go on. Yeah, well, um, yes, I'll I'll just keep going because <laughs> yes, um, what I found about it is that I don't know for an average user for an average user it could be a little tricky to to use it be before you learn how all the settings work. I don't know, maybe I'm just spoiled with Quest Two and the simplicity of that, and maybe all these high league he headsets, you know, they require this high level of. Um, just adaptability to each game because each game requires a specific settings and that was new to me but what i found is that some games would straight up not play under certain settings and i didn't know that and i thought i bricked my headset because i oh, said yeah. i said the the largest fov i think it was 180 right and lone echo wouldn't start and neither would some other games and i thought oh my goodness right. I completely ruined somehow this amazing headset and it won't play. And yeah, it took me a while to like figure out that it's just that some specific settings would crash PyTool. And I thought that, you know, without me being in direct contact with Kevin, who would tell me what to do, basically an average consumer would have no idea how to use yeah. it, especially same, if we're talking same, about... Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like, no... Well, it takes a lot of work to get like a single game to play, you know, with a quality that would make you comfortable and enjoy it. And I think the first one I tried, I, I always start with like the simplest thing, air car. Do you know that one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. I love that. Uh, it's just, you can see everything. I can see the difference in colors and depth and the blacks in movement. Like I always start with that. And that's the one that completely wowed me on Pimax, but then trying other ones, you know, that require more tinkering um, just made me realize how like, how much work you need to put in to make it, um, you know, really perform at the highest level. So I think, okay, I wonder how, you know, people spend a lot of money to get AKX, but then they also need to learn all these technical things to, to make it work and to enjoy it truly. So I don't know. Was that your Is experience it... too? Like, am, am I just spoiled? No, no. Quest two? no, no, you're totally right. Like, if I would go about my first experience, I would t d directly dismiss it because I installed it, uh, I put it inside uh, of my computer, and it said, like, uh, okay, I'm doing, doing the, um, the new uh, firmware update, and then it said failed, and the thing was basically bricked. So normal people would absolutely send it back. And mm -hmm. just because I have some community members who helped me, I could unbrick it by using some kind of command line tool and it was a nightmare. So mm. for normal people until now, it's still not so easy to recommend. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I do agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's an enthusiast headset, isn't it? And you you got to go into this knowing you need to do some tinkering. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, I was, yeah, I was going to yeah. say it's like a tinkerer's kind it of is. headset. Still, in some ways. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, and, and yeah, you're right, Spatum, because it's been a long time since I tried it. But when I installed that PyTool, so do you still have this thing with, what's it called? I can't remember. It's parallel uh, projections. Yeah. Yeah. You, you That's have it. Some, Achilles heel. Yeah. So it has to have some some uh, applications require that. Others don't right. require it. Right. Yeah. But, mm. but they now have some new software called the Pimax Experience where the best settings are already baked in. So you don't have okay. to yourself know, okay, this this game needs it. No, you simply 
launch the game through this Pimax experience and then they already know if it needs some um, parallel projections or not and then it will be there. So that is better now. So they, they did improve. They, they really, really improved a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. I wouldn't recommend that though. The the it's just approximate approximation. That's not even a word. You know what I mean? It's it's trying to. It's basically trying to guess what settings are correct for that mm -hmm. application, but it doesn't work very well because parallel reprojection doesn't always know it's needed. Like for Microsoft Flight Simulator, it doesn't have it enabled. So the first thing you try is, you you know, you have it on your head. And it's like this is horrible. You can just see loads of pixels everywhere uh, to the sides because of all that frostrum culling, as they call it. Uh, where the, the game thinks you can't see that wide you're not an owl there's no way you can see that far you know i'm just gonna put it really like this and then yeah and it, it ruins the experience so there is still a, a degree of technical knowledge you need to have to have yeah. a pimax and for yeah. Agree. yeah and i still don't think i got it to the best level i still see some ghosting in most of the games and i try to play with these um, all these options until you know until the game doesn't run and then I backtrack my steps to when it's still run like okay well at least it runs now I don't know it's it's a mess um, I do enjoy the FOV though but I hope that you know in the next iteration 12 K all this will be done automatically and we won't have to 12 K can you imagine that it can you know we can not even 8 K at the moment I just I'm very intrigued to see how it's gonna and that is know. that is the next thing that I want to talk about so Something exciting is going to be coming up on the channel. So next week, there's going to be a live stream, most probably on Friday. And Kevin will be live on MRTV. And he is going to talk about the 12K QLED on the channel for the first time exclusively here oh, on MRTV. Amazing. And it's going to happen most probably on Friday. And he's going to show the 12K QLED. And that is basically um, yeah, what should have happened at the CES earlier this year in Las Vegas, but they couldn't wow. go there because of um, COVID. And that's also why I didn't go, next to some other reasons. And yeah, it's going to happen on MRTV. So yeah, if you have not subscribed to MRTV yet, do so now, because mm -hmm. next week you're going to see the 12K QLED here on MRTV and you will be able to ask all questions it's going to be a live show and I will also um, post something on Twitter and there will be like a, a certain hashtag where you can simply um, ask your questions beforehand and I will ask all the questions then directly in the live show with Kevin the COO of Pimax so the 12k QLED finally is going to be shown here live on the channel next week. Yeah, so definitely That's do. Boom. Is he, is he actually showing it? Is. MRTV. He's going is to he showing, showing he will, the headset He will itself. be showing the headset. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll be watching. I'll be watching. <laughs> yeah. So The whole so this, world will be watching that one, the, Seth. That's the whole, amazing. Congratulations. The whole world will be tuning in to <laughs> MRTV finally. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Evil laugh. <laughs> Evil laugh. You've got to do that as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, that, that's what we wanted to see at at um, at CS, right? We wanted to see basically me going to that booth and checking it out. So now we're going to have it like me looking um, at it through the webcam, and and um, Kevin, the CEO of uh, Pimax, is going to show it to us, and he's going to answer all of the questions. So do um, follow me on Twitter as well. The the handle is mixed reality tv and um simply watch the channel because i'm going to let you know which hashtag you can use in order to ask any kind of question so this is going to be super exciting so this going that's going to be coming up <laughs> on wow. the channel yeah yeah really cool really cool also of course if you um have watched MRTV recently, there's also the chance to win the, the Vario Arrow. So there's a very cool giveaway. Hope that most of you have joined already. Th that giveaway is totally going crazy. And uh, yeah, you have the chance to win the Vario Arrow. Very cool. Courtesy of Vario. So that's happening as well. So it's absolutely worth it to follow MRTV on Twitter, Steve. What's that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 this, it's the latest craze. Is it really? I'll yeah, yeah, it is. It. It, it is pretty cool. It's it's a it's a, some <laughs> social media thingy which uh, I also have recently joined and it's pretty cool. 
<laughs> <laughs> hey, though, I have watched The Matrix now, though. So, you know, at least I've done that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I have watched what did you now. think? Yeah, I did. Uh, you, oh, you I was blown it. away with it. I was, yeah. It was incredible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably really you would it. love Twitter as well. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Just, it is, yeah, it is absolutely. pretty cool. Yeah, I've made some cool connections th through Twitter. Yep, yep. So that's what I did. Um, started Team MRTV, tried out the headsets, the yeah, the G2, made the Arrow giveaway, and tried also, yeah, the 8KX. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. And. Uh, also trying lots of games now and simply follow follow the channel lots of things going on lots of videos now nearly every day which is cool that's yep. insane i'm jealous that you can <laughs> get all to cover everything now that's i think yep. every you know content now, creator's dream to now to be able happening. to cover everything oh. yeah that's really cool because i got full access now to all the all the hardware like before but now i also got yeah all the access to all the software so Yep, lots of things going on now on MRTV and excited about growing the channel. Yeah, but now we have, after one hour and 20 minutes, <laughs> we have finished <laughs> our talking about our catching up. But now let's talk about some, um, some things that happened in virtual reality, some exciting topics. Let's talk about, what should we talk about? Um, let's talk about probably... Um, yeah, let's directly talk about the PSVR. Why not? Come on, let's directly start with a big topic. So let me share the screen here. And here it is. This is the PlayStation VR 2. So we did hear from Sony about the specs before, but they did not talk about the design. They did not show the design, but now recently they did show it. This is the PlayStation VR 2. For all the people who are watching this right now, you can see it here now and in my opinion, it looks really beautiful. It's it's a, a white design, and it doesn't look so much different than the PSVR 1. So it's still that kind of halo design, and the PSVR 1, in my opinion, is a very, very comfortable headset. So they didn't stray away from that design a lot, but you, you can tell that it, the headset itself, it looks more round in my opinion also now it has four cameras here in um, on the front plate because the psvr2 now has a different kind of tracking system so no more one camera in the front that's on the tv or so now it has inside out tracking with four cameras just like the quest 2 the controllers also look really interesting they have that tracking ring and a very different kind of position not like the quest 2 or the reverb g2 in front of the controller but more it's in the back of the controller and your hands would kind of like go through the controller first and then you grab it very interesting design looks cool and probably this could do a lot about balancing of the controllers the headset itself it still has a cable unfortunately and it seems to be a cable that you cannot detach from the headset itself so most probably all the people who had hoped about like a wireless um, attachment kit that could be purchased later this is most probably not going to happen yeah so i would like to know about your thoughts about the design of this headset so uh, w what are your thoughts gary about the psvr2 design yeah, I think uh, you're right. I think it looks very similar to the original PSVR in terms of like just form factor. But um, yeah, of course, it's got the inside out tracking and those kinds of things. And I like it. I think it looks it looks good. It looks functional and they've remained with that halo strap, which makes sense because everybody loved that. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, it looks fantastic. The, um, the hardwired cable... <laughs> you know, like you mentioned, it means that there will probably never be any kind of wireless attachment or anything like that for this device. Right. And it seems that it was designed that way from the beginning. For me personally, I think there's a couple of things with this design, which I mainly have issues with. I, I'm a big fan of the original PSVR anyway, and I'm going to be a big fan of this headset. I know I am, but there's a couple of things which are a little bit concerning. The, the first one is the lack of an integrated audio solution is one of the main things which I really 
I, I wish they had headphones attached to this. This it, oh, you're friction. Right. You're right. Friction you're is right. one of the main things with VR in, in this capacity, at least. It's one of the main things that will turn people off putting this headset on. And I think integrated audio would have been a big deal. It's not a deal breaker. And anything I mention here is not a deal breaker to people actually purchasing it, in my opinion. But I do think that that's a, a big loss. The other thing is on the cable, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, and I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that I read that the audio jack to connect the headphones is actually on the cable in the same way as it was on the original version one of PSVR. So it's halfway down the cable. You plug in a 3.5 millimeter jack. Now, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that I read that somewhere. And if that's the case, I think that's the wrong decision as well. I think when they did the version two of the PSVR, they had the audio jack on the headset, which would be ideal. And again, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong on that. Um, But... That's that, that. Those are the two main things. The other thing is the cable itself. And I'm sorry to say this because I, I do think that they have made this decision out of necessity. They simply couldn't get a wireless solution for the cost that they needed You're to right. release the headset for. Yeah. That's that's what it comes down to. It's a shame, nevertheless. So I think that's that's an issue in the situation that this headset is going to be used in the living room. If no. Just speaking for myself, if I lived on my own or I lived sort of in a, in, I had a dedicated room to PlayStation or something like that, this would be far less of an issue. But I live in with my family and the PlayStation is in the living room because it's shared by all the family, all the family use it. I think a cable in that situation is more of an issue than it is in like on my valve index where it's in my office. And I know I'm talking about my own particular situation here, but I do think that the console VR being primarily in the living room, it's a shame that it's got a cable. I still believe that that is a shame, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, I understand it. Don't get me wrong. I perfectly understand that they need to keep this device to the lowest cost possible and they need to keep it to the maximum fidelity possible, which is what they've done. So it's probably the right decision. I still can't help but think of it is a bit of a shame, unfortunately. But probably if you would look through it and then see just how beautiful the, the 2K picture looks like and compared to your um, Quest 2 with, with that, yeah, like um, processed picture, I'm sure that this will make up yeah, for definitely. it. That, that's what I feel right now. Like right, think- this HDR, OLED beautiful picture and probably better lenses as well yeah i think you will be blown away that's that's what i think right now absolutely for me i mean look for me personally if i was on this isn't going to stop and what i was saying at the beginning any of these issues is not going to stop anybody from purchasing the playstation vr2 i don't think it's that much of a deal breaker I'm just yeah. talking about it being a shame that they couldn't do it. And they could they couldn't do it. I understand that. It's not it's not a simple thing, it's not a cheap thing for them to attain while keeping the costs down. And people can point to the Quest 2 that has what wireless PC VR support, not to the same fidelity that the PlayStation VR2 is going to have. And that that's the difference that we're talking about here. Um so yeah, I mean I, I'm looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. I think there's... Um, and look, yeah, so this comment here, no video compression, artifacts, no lag, input and latency. That's a, a great comment. And the counter to that comment would be YGIG2 technology, which would mean no video compression. That would come at a significant cost. And that's why they've they've not gone down that route. So I don't want a PlayStation VR 2, which has video compression. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is a wireless solution, which has no compression, which is too expensive at this moment in time. So that's why I understand they've made this, this de- decision. Right, right. So, um, Tatiana, what are your thoughts about um, PlayStation VR 2? Is it something that you're excited about? Or um, what are your thoughts? No, of course I'm excited about it. But just to to add a little bit to what you've been talking about, I might be wrong, but I I feel like there's going to be a lot of consumers that are, will be upgrading from PlayStation VR one to two. Yeah. And for those, because they already have the console, I believe. If if the new one will work, maybe with PlayStation four. No, it doesn't. Um, you but need to have PlayStation a, five. Okay, but. In either way, it's going to be such a huge upgrade from that, which already was a cable device, better in literally right. every single way. 
Yeah. Um, maybe it's not going to be such a deal breaker for most of the consumers who really love the you know playing games and don't want to build a, a gaming PC. Sorry, Steve, <laughs> but I just want to <laughs> have this console. And I know my brother is like that. He doesn't want to have a gaming that. PC. He just wants the simplicity of having the console to know that all games will run flawlessly because they were designed to run that way. And then there is this headset that does these amazing things that we couldn't imagine before with the previous iteration. So, um, yeah, so I definitely will um, get it as soon as it's possible to get it. I mean, I got my PlayStation 5 because of VR, PlayStation VR 2. I don't even play it that much, and I was perfectly happy with PlayStation 4, to be honest, with the little time that I have. Um, so I will definitely get it as soon as I can. Um, what, what, what was about the design I wanted to say? Uh, Oh, yeah. I mean, white is the new black, right? And just look at right here. Doesn't it look exactly like that picture? <laughs> like my Your quest yeah, looks so it's small. It's wow. Look at that. It's tiny. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> if you can show like that picture from the, ar from the article of PlayStation, it looks exactly oh, wait, 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 wait. like Quest. Like it's a round shade. That halo strap is almost identical. Like not this one, but um, uh, there was. Where is it? Ah. Uh, Okay, maybe it's supposed yeah. to... Oh, yeah, this one. It's, like, almost the same as the one... Right. Like, the way I positioned my quest. But anyway, uh, I guess it's not a, a bad thing. The previous um, PlayStation VR was, had white elements, too. Yeah, right. um, but, but I'm also curious. Like, we don't really see the scale. So we can't really tell it's... how big it's going to be. Somebody um, checked it based on on that um, hole for the headphones, and it seems to be a bit bigger even than a PlayStation VR 1. Wow. Yeah. So it's not going to be as small as the Quest 2. But, well, for me, mm -hmm. that's fine. As long as we, 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 we will get, like, a bigger FOV, a bit bigger. It's supposed to be a bit bigger, 110 degrees horizontally, most probably. That will be bigger than the valve index which would be incredible right and then with perfect blacks thanks to the oled and hdr mm -hmm. together with that that would be cool now what i'm most mm -hmm. excited about are the controllers and especially that kind of like trigger that kind of force feedback trigger it will make us feel the different weapons or whatever we have like way better right it's already in the dual sense controller of the playstation 5 but to have that now in virtual reality that is really really cool <laughs> so so what what are and your thoughts just, yeah yeah but not just that but you know the haptic feedback will be not just in the controllers but in the exactly, headset also too. in the head that's something new that is something really yeah. cool i yeah. look forward to that right right so uh, since we totally disagree about everything today steve what are, <laughs> your, <laughs> what are your thoughts about the psvr5 well, it's a difficult one for me, obviously, because I'm not really a console person as such. But I totally understand what Tatiana said about, you know, you mm -hmm. just want to, you know, come home from work, just put on the whatever game you, you want to play, put on the VR headset and then just play. I totally get that. And actually, that's mm -hmm. why I love my quest so much, because mm -hmm. if I cannot be bothered doing all of the setting up geeky things, I just want to, you know, I'll play mini golf and that's the, or, or something like that, you know, or Resident Evil or something where I know it will work perfectly every time. So I totally get yeah. that. But I do, I think it looks great, but I just, white, really? Like, <laughs> can we just get away from this now? I, I think it looked great in black, you know. It would look, a really, it would look really cool in black. But um, I, it doesn't really matter, though, at the end of the day. It's, uh, you're going to be put on your head. It, really matter. But um, it does look very nice, very desirable looking. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised they've gone to make it look and to the point that Tetiana was making about it looking so similar to the Quest. It's a, it's a it's, yeah, Quest it's a 2. Like, oh, it's a weird really? decision because really they shouldn't position this as being yeah. a, a it's, competitive no, it's high end VR, really. Quest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. People, it, it, they already have the reputation. They don't, yeah, they yeah. don't need that kind of association. Yeah. Oh. Um, but, I am, yeah. Sorry, go on. <laughs> Oh, oh, I can't even. I don't think I was going to say anything. <laughs> I think I was just going to mumble something. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> but, but like, yeah, I just think I'd love to see it in any other color but white. Maybe I've just got this astigmatism with the quest being white. I just want to see something to differentiate it to to sort yeah. to its own thing. Yeah. I think it would look really nice. I mean, I like can't believe I'm just talking color, like who really cares? Oh, purple, yeah, great. Or some sort of way of, you know, some different color options. Just 
because it would make it more desirable to me definitely um I, how could I this be any more desirable than it is right now? I think for me, that's the most desirable <laughs> VR headset that is Even somewhere in, yeah, out there. I want it. Yeah, would, I you like, would you like it in black? It. Though? Would, it, would you like it more if it was in black or purple? No, or, I, would, or... I wouldn't care if, if it was in, in uh, leaf Pink. green. I guess, I guess <laughs> it's because of the PS5, isn't it? The PS5 yeah, is... Yeah, it can't be anything. Now, that's why yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it can't be any different color. Yeah, but I, I do. I, I like how the tracking rings... And the only reason why I thought about this was because of the, the these Pimax ones. Is the because they're at the back, they're going to have better weight distribution. Um, and yeah, I really I felt I really felt that I more felt balance, that right? Is it does it feel more balanced? So, so balanced. I mean, obviously these aren't them. I know, but you know, it gives you an idea. And what also I noticed because I played a lot of I played a massive session of uh, after the fall with the saw controllers, and because of the rings at the back, when I was reloading weapons, I thought I'd try the reload thing and make it you know more realistic. It just the rings you just don't they don't get in the way at all because obviously they're at the back so you know reloading re weapons just was not an issue for me so i quite i quite like that that's quite cool um and just those little things make a big difference like you know when you i'm always bashing the rings on the um quest controllers um and the windows which are controls which i don't really use that much anyway they're, they're kind of an annoying but i was really disappointed personally more so than the cable was they got fresnel and they got Fresnel lenses. That, even though different it's ones, though. Different, Unfortunately. They're, but they, seems, they, they're yep. using different technology, though, aren't they, on those lenses, apparently? So. They have okay. a, a patent pending which says that, um, yeah, these are Fresnel lenses. However, it seems like they got rid of the, the God rays. That's the problem of the Fresnel lenses, right? So f that would be amazing because, in general, Fresnel lenses are lighter, they don't have distortion problems as compared to uh, spheric lenses. And the only problem normally is that um, God ray problem. But if they have solved it, th that would basically be perfect. It would be, yeah. And and also, I mean, those aspheric lenses on the original PlayStation VR 1 were fantastic. They they really were. And yeah. th there was... I mean, that was one of the main things when you put that headset on compared to coming from, at that time, an original Vive or, or an original Rift CV1. You had this incredible clarity, I think, as well. And um, that was one of the things that differentiated it in spite of the lower resolution. Right. Um, it still looked fantastic, the PSVR1 at that time. Totally agreed. And even now, I can use the PSVR1, even though I have much better headsets, but I can still enjoy it even though it was one yeah. of the first headsets. And I think that's pretty amazing. So I'm sure that Sony is going to hit it out of the ballpark with that. I'm so sure we will all be amazed by it and everyone is going to get it. Mm. Just the thing yeah. is with obviously um, the way PlayStation, they obviously don't have a new console like every year or every two years. It can be a long cycle. So the other yes. thing I'm just thinking of is the longevity of it. I mean, it might... It, when it hits it the market this good. year, it still will be relevant, absolutely, with the with the rate of change. I think it's still going to be very, very much accepted within the technology it's going to bring to table. But maybe in another year, even a year's time from now, will it start to look old very quickly? That's well, the other. I don't think so. This is one of the things I was I was thinking about as well. Um, and this is the thing because we're hearing rumors about the fact that the this headset is going to be coming out early next year now that that's basically the rumors that, that are happening oh really um, yeah late, so so it won't be it was originally supposed to be coming out at the end of this year but then i think it was playstation vr with uh, without parole who have had some inside information before in the past have said that it's probably going to be coming out early next year we don't know these are all rumors anyway but one of the things i was of the opinion that this resolution is fantastic and i think it's going to be fantastic anyway it's similar to the reverb g2 which has a, a fantastic level of clarity yeah, that's right. a, an older headset now and at this moment in time i think the specs of the psvr or psvr2 are very good when it comes out in a year's time it could be starting to have the same position as the original psvr had in 2016 in the sense that that had a lower resolution yet it still competed pretty closely with all the headsets all the contemporary headsets around that time nobody really complained too much about the headset itself all people complained about was the tracking so i think right. it doesn't necessarily need to have the highest of high specs 
it's a console based VR headset, which does a will probably do a fantastic job in terms of resolution anyway. And that's really what I'm talking about here. I think that resolution is, it sounds great today. It will sound good yeah. in a year's time. Um, I think but... in, on its own, in its own ecosystem, when you put it on, you're going to be blown away with it no matter when it comes out, aren't you? And I think yeah. that's important. And it's going to be frigging incredible. I think the the thing that is going to set it apart more than anything else is this uh, sort of... Uh, force feedback thing which sounds it does sound amazing actually it does sound very intri intriguing so I, I don't i don't think anything else is going to compete and add that kind of functionality coming out before then so right but yeah that cable it is a shame though it isn't it's got to be said <laughs> it is a shame it's a shame but it's understandable i think that's that's my takeaway I, be, because the reason i bring that up originally is because i see a lot of people talking about the cable saying get over it it's not a big deal. I think it is a big deal, but it's not <laughs> enough of a big deal to stop people purchasing it, and it's not a, a big enough deal to stop people from enjoying it when they get it as well. So, uh, but maybe for now. Oh, sorry, Sebastian, you want to say something? No, no, <laughs> like, no, go oh, good. I will, I will. Yeah, I'll just say something very quickly yeah. about the cable because I was kind of the same idea at first that it's not a big deal because there are so many hats out there that are with with the cable, and they're not taking as much as much, you know. <laughs> As, as PlayStation VR 2 does. But I think the difference here is, like, when did the first one come out? Like, over 10 years ago? 2016. No, no 2016, the first one okay. came out. Yep. Yeah. So that's, like, six years? So yeah. how much the technology has changed in six years? And it's going to be developing even faster now. If the cable isn't a big deal now, maybe it will be in a year. And PlayStation isn't going to be releasing a new headset every year. No. It's probably going to wait a, a considerable amount of time be before they produce something new. So it might become um, like more annoying much faster than maybe Sony would prefer. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah no, it does. Mean. Like a I, lot I, more headsets will become wireless and PlayStation will be stuck with that. And it's hardwired in. That's the, <laughs> that's the weird decision as well. Having a hardwired cable where they, even yeah. if the cable gets damaged or is faulty, you have to get a new headset. It's a, it's a, that to me is a weird situation yeah, anyway. I agree. That part is a bit strange. It could it would be better if it was like detachable and somehow they would set them up for being able to somehow upgrade to the wireless um, mm -hmm. version <laughs> somehow. And so so yeah, I, I agree with that. That could that also when I saw that like I was a bit sad about that. But in terms of visuals, I don't think that this is going to look old very soon. Because even yeah. even the old PSVR one with that low resolution, because it had OLED and, and RGB stripe matrix, it didn't really have the big problem of screen door effect. And now think about this here now, this now with the resolution of the G2, but in, in OLED, I'm, I, I'm sure we won't have any problems with screen door effect. Everything will just look good and with amazing colors. So I don't think we're going to have problems with the, the visuals at all. And then think about it, this also has eye tracking. We didn't even talk about it. Mm. So yeah. how does it? That's good. It has eye tracking. So I they can do that. they can do really a lot with foveated rendering. That's important. That's right. Really so important. so even like in five years, when the PS five probably is not anymore like a strong console, when it's not when it cannot compete in, anymore in terms of um, like uh, computing power against PCs it will still be able to bring us amazing graphics and amazing visuals because dynamic foveated rendering, because only the part that we're looking at needs to be rendered at full resolution. So this is going to be like state-of-the-art VR for a long time. And I think it's going to blow us away one, once it comes out. I agree with you guys with um, the cable that sucks, but... Honestly, I still have amazing experiences with cable VR with the Aero right now. Even though I also really love the I love the the wireless Quest 2, but because it looks so much better, I still use the Aero more f for my well, VR experiences. And I think I'm sure it's going to be the same with PlayStation VR 2 and they are going to bring us way more AAA games because of yeah, their that's the thing. because of their new um yeah, kind of um, like plan to to have this kind of um, AAA games that have a flat mode. The, the normal PS5 games, they will have the VR mode in it. So it's a new whole new strategy that I think makes so much sense. Instead of 
like developing something only for VR that probably might fail financially because not, there's not the market. They simply do their um, Call of Duty, which has a VR mode. And then suddenly, like those big IPs are there for VR. And I think that is a big difference. That makes a big difference for VR. And wow, I'm rooting for them. I think it's great. What does that actually mean to have a VR mode? Because that means it doesn't sound like it's going to be, you know, traditionally made from the ground up in VR, which of no. course it probably won't be. That concerns me a little bit as well, because well, we all know from Hitman that, you know, yeah, a sort Hitman, of port, VR yeah, port Hitman, can be an issue. Right, right. right. To, to me, that's Hitman was, was a half step. What I think what they are trying to do with this is almost like, I don't know if any of you guys have played Hellblade in VR, um, Hellblade came out as a flat game and then they right. made a VR version, but it was a, a gamepad based version, which basically played the same as the flat version, but you played with a gamepad, you sat. And I think that their strategy is just to have a VR mode, which is identical to the flat version. You play with a gamepad in the same way that you do uh, normally, but it's got stereoscopic, it's all around you and you can play like that. And to me, I think that's a great, compromise it's not ideal i would love like a, a vr version of all these games but it means that the developers don't have to put in any extra work and then they get all of this extra content this strategy to me yeah. is absolutely fantastic this is one of the Agreed. things if they can pull it off then this will be absolutely fantastic and by the way this also makes the cable less of an issue as well because most of these you'll be playing seated with a yeah. gamepad who cares about a cable then not many people really agreed agreed yeah and just think about something like gran turismo 7 suddenly has a vr mode with the playstation vr 2 so yep the playstation mm -hmm. vr 2 will be the must-have accessory like mm -hmm. mrtv team member william made the video about it's going to be fantastic just to play those games in virtual reality and i think we we are up to a lots of lots of great games or like Re resident evil 7 i mean not that I would have played it because I cannot play horror <laughs> games in virtual reality, but I know that lots of people love it, even though it's also a game made for uh, flat for flat gaming. Mm -hmm. And the VR version also only has the, the gamepad controls, but it seems like people still love it in virtual reality. Yeah, I'm getting very hopeful about this. The, with all the mods that are also coming out for games, some of them just work so well with games that were not uh, built from ground up for VR. So I'm not actually that discouraged if... You know, if, if if this is the case, that the games are first introduced in flat screen and then made VR mode, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be great be if they would be able to users. collect some analytics of people playing these games in the VR mode and not, they and then over, sure over do it. yeah, and, mm -hmm. and maybe that's their way of kind of tiptoeing in. And then over time, they'd be like, oh, hang on a minute, wow, everyone's loving this VR mode. We, we need to invest more into it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, PlayStation VR 2, yeah, probably only coming in a, only in a year's time, so a long wait. But we still have lots of amazing yeah, VR headsets to use, right? The Quest and then the next Quest and everything that's on the market right now. We still have lots of headsets to use <laughs> until we get that PSVR 2. But surely, yeah. well, I'm excited about the PSVR 2 and it's desirable no matter if it's only in white <laughs> it's kind of, I, I, I want it <laughs> I, I want it very fast someone in the chat said that you know uh ukrainian colors <laughs> blue and yellow would be nice i can customize uh, it because, for you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah that would be cool that would be cool there would uh, be some decals for sure that would be that would be good we only right. talked a little bit about the haptics by the way on the on the actual headset but i think it's like so amazing right it is Soon they're very... going to be covered with haptics uh, from head to toe, like haptic vest, <laughs> haptic <laughs> controllers, haptic shoes, and now haptic headset. Imagine like you're working, walking in VR, and you can like feel a little bit of vibration of the wind or the breeze, or yeah. like a gunshot or explosion, and it's it. like shaking it. Like you can you can feel the the huge explosion somewhere, yeah. or if you're falling, like I don't know. It's, it's amazing, like to exactly. add that, and you don't even need to buy. If you don't have a haptic vest, you know, you can add that level of like s s uh, sense just with the headset. They will be creative with that, the developers, for all kinds of things. Who knows? Like putting on a hat and that moment you feel putting on the hat, it's, it's yeah. going to be cool. It's, there's oh, going to yeah. be so many cool things. It's just going the, to be so much more immersive. Just quickly as well. Um, so uh, 
D1360 VR made a few comments, but one one of the ones that is interesting here is he said, um, or they said, all PSVR 1 content will keep PSVR 2 busy until new games come out. That's an interesting point we've not touched on because I right. don't believe that PlayStation have confirmed one way or another with backwards compatibility, which to me is a surprise because I would assume that most of the VR content would be back, backwards compatible, it, taking it, it out of the, the fact the inputs are different. So you have thumbsticks on the PSVR 2 and you don't have that on the original PSVR 1. In terms of like tracking and stuff like that, that doesn't really matter because that's handled by the system level. But what I'm talking about is it would be, I assumed all the way through that, that basically they would make sure that all PSVR 1 titles would be compatible with psvr2 but that might not be the case we don't know about that yet right right so yeah i'm i'm very excited about it i think most of us most of the people like watching or listening this podcast are excited about the playstation vr2 and this is going to be huge for virtual reality like in my opinion Absolutely. like sony is one of the mm -hmm. only companies that could actually compete against Meta right now. I mean, Meta is like owning VR right now, and there are some other companies that do some headsets, but honestly speaking, I believe that Sony is the, the one company that could do something, next to Valve, of course, but we, we didn't really hear lots, lots from Valve anymore. Yeah, who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? But PlayStation VR 2 definitely is going to be exciting. So, um, yeah, I believe Tatiana and Gary are going to get it. But w what about Steve? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this point in time, no. But um, I do think, like, you know, imagine if... Because I think uh, Microsoft are going to be watching this closely, aren't they, really? And obviously, at the moment, the Xbox, they, they hate VR. It seems like it, or, you know, but... Right. I, I just try, I'm trying to think, what if I could play a, you know... Oh, you know, use Microsoft Flight Simulator or DCS or one of the really full fat complex sims on a console, knowing I'll always have great performance. If that ever was a thing, that, that I would absolutely go for it. Then I think uh, for me personally, but I'm I'm a bit of a special case, quite literally. So uh, I think most people, I am, you know, literally, I'm such a nerd with flight simming. I think for most yeah. VR people out there, it's it's a it's a must and. Regardless of what I think, this is a massive, huge step for VR. It needs to happen. It's a, it's a huge positive because we, we so need a company like Sony to produce something like this. And uh, yeah, very. Ex I'm excited to see how this plays out, really. But I won't be yeah. buying one. No. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's see. How Unless goes, I can Steve? try one somehow, you know, and yeah. I'll, maybe then I'll be like, wow, this is amazing. See, yeah, this is yeah. one of the headsets that they could have like available to demo in retail stores and stuff like that. It's going to be I'd that. So do bit. that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. Yeah, if I can, you know, find a way of trying one, I would love to do that. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you can visit the MRTV headquarter sometime. Yes. That well, we're going to have a beer at yeah, some point. We, yeah, we so, will. It's it's about time. Beer. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. We really have to meet all of us and uh, have a have a show like being at the same space. That would be really good. Yeah, okay, cool. So that's the PSVR 2 topic. Really exciting. It still takes lots of time until we own it. <laughs> but then I believe it's going to be exciting. Okay, let's talk about the next um, topic. And uh, yep, let me share something here. And that is the trailer for a new game that is coming up and uh, it's going to be released in the end of... March and that is Moss Book Book <laughs> Moss Book Two, and it's going to be um, launching on the PSVR first. So just like the first title, Moss Book One, it was first released on the PSVR, then it came to Quest and PC VR, and yeah, Moss Book Two, Moss Book Two <laughs> is going to launch on the PSVR <laughs> One first. So Moss was. Amazing. the the first The first title was simply amazing. One of the most amazing titles that I've ever played in VR. So it is. Wow. It's uh, yeah, really. It is so good, and it is not first person. It is third person. So you mm. are like looking at this world, and you are uh, using your uh, controllers to control that little mouse, and mm. you um, experience some 
incredible adventures and it's just so cute and it just works so well so before before moss i didn't think that like a like a um, um a third person view like a view like looking like on on things would work so well in vr yeah. but it does it's simply fantastic yeah and I, i simply would like to ask um probably gary did you play moss one and what are your thoughts about it yeah i played it on playstation vr when it first came out and uh yeah it's it's a good game it's really good um i wouldn't put it as like one of my favorite vr games in like my top 10 or something like that <laughs> but wow. it would be it would be it would be you know close to there it's it's a very good game for what it is i think part of it as well i played it and then astrobot came out oh astrobot is also really good <laughs> yeah and and yeah, that right. sort of took a little bit of the shine away from moss okay. to be honest around that time but they're different games they're third person games and they're sort of cutesy in that way but they, they are different kinds of games and i thought it was great i played all the way through it i've even picked it up on my quest as well because it's available on quest yeah, um i've started it again i've not played through it again on quest but it's it's a great port on that system as well um so yeah i've been looking forward to this for a long time and it's not really like my it's not the kind of game i would usually gravitate to but then again astrobot wasn't either but it's it sucks you in and one of the things that people had complaints about with the original moss is the combat i didn't have a that big an issue with the combat actually i thought Me it was neither. okay in the original one but people did seem to complain about that and this one seems to have tackled that and had added extra sort of combat mechanics in and things like that so i'm interested in trying it i i'm sort of now i don't know it's it's a few years later and i don't know if i'm quite as um enthusiastic about this title as i was about the original moss that's all i'll say okay. but i'm still interested in it for sure yeah Right. Um, Tatiana, did you play Moss? I did play Moss and it was good. It was nice. I think just like Gary, I wouldn't call it my favorite game or one of my top favorites for some reason. Um, I don't know. I played it and I had fun, but I didn't get addicted to it. Like some okay. people who would say, wow, this is the best game on VR I've ever played. And I do appreciate the different mechanics, like the third person view which uh that's not not the first game from the third person that i played the first vr game like that that i played was called uh, it was about alice not alice but down the rabbit hole on quest mm -hmm. do you know that one yeah. i've not played well, that one no. yeah it's, it's basically you know also you're controlling well not alice but another girl who is in this um the world from lewis carroll but it's more and puzzling right It was a more puzzle yeah. kind of a game. Right. Now, Moss right. is interesting because it also has elements of puzzles. So you also need to think like to go through different levels, but it also has like action, action. and combat. And I right. think maybe that's why like in my head, it was a little bit of a misfit because at first I thought it was going to be a puzzle game. And then I realized, wait, 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 I'm going to fight now. Oh, I'm going to die. I can die. <laughs> and I have to solve some puzzles. So it was a mix of both. Maybe I wasn't ready for it. But it was still really fun. And actually, now that we talk about it on the show, it reminded me that I need to finish it. I still haven't. Yeah. So I probably should finish it before the next one comes out. Um, but I can totally see why it has gained so much popularity. Like, for one, you don't get any motion sickness when you play it. Because it's one of those rare cases you're not actually moving so much as you're just mm -hmm. looking at what's going on. And things are moving there. And it really helps. Uh, ground you so that you're not you know experiencing so much motion um so maybe right. it makes it a really nice game as an intro you know to show that you can exactly. be in this world Perfect. and yeah so I, i can totally see it being you know the next one being successful because i've seen so many comments like maybe a year ago maybe when people were starting to buy quest and play and discover all these games on in facebook vr groups people were Like a lot of people were pleading for the next moss. When is the next moss coming out? I yeah, hope man. there's the next chapter. So a lot of people will be happy about it if it comes on Quest. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it, will. <laughs> it would be really, it really weird if it doesn't. But I'm just stating the facts. You know, we haven't heard that yet. They haven't yeah, yeah. been talking I think, about it. But they want the, to earn money, right? So I think it's going to happen. 
Originally, it was a so it was a PlayStation VR one exclusive for twelve months. I think exactly. the original yeah, one wasn't it. Not sure it? if so, it was twelve months, but it was some yeah. time. There was exclusive exactly. But the the, um, the good thing about it as well is the the ending actually sort of inspires you to want to play a little bit more. I really like the ending of this game. It's not always the case where yeah, it, don't spoil it. <laughs> I won't, I won't. But it builds up and it's got a nice, satisfying ending, but also leads forward into into what this could be so um i think there's yeah i i, li- I liked it and just talking about it actually i'm getting a little bit more excited for it <laughs> yeah right um steve um did you try it well i'm, I'm just i've been searching while you've been chatting because yeah, right. there was a third person game that i did play ages ago like when i got a rift and it was called lucky's lucky's yeah, tale yeah, I think yeah. It was right. oh, it just, that's on yeah. quest as well now it and is. I literally, I mean, I'm, it's, I, you probably be surprised because I'm fairly hardy VR, you know, uh, I, you know, when it comes to motion sickness, but I could not play more than five minutes of that without feeling <laughs> really sick. Oh, really? I just oh, felt totally. so bad. Yeah. So, so I think from that point onwards, I've always just not, I've just completely discounted any third person VR games. So I'm intrigued to hear what you were saying, Tatiana, like you don't feel sick playing uh, but, Moss. Is it, it must be a different mechanic to that third but here's person the question. view when lucky is moving is the camera moving behind him yeah i think I that was a problem but that's yeah. the difference for, for this no did other people like feel this? sick playing that because I, yeah. I can't remember how it was now because it was ages ago but i'm pretty sure you had to move the camera around yourself to kind of and you you, you kind of go you know, it follows around, it follows lucky yeah so i've played it recently oh, so yeah okay. that's the difference well, it does follow it. lucky as you go through these these levels and it does make people feel a bit odd honestly it does um, but moss is not like that it's static scenes that you can okay you see around. the entire scene and yeah. then it just moves around yeah so ah. now now it makes sense be right. fair I, in fact i might play it try it again now because obviously i started using that when i first got into vr and it just immediately made me feel bad but i might be all right now so i might try but it this but, one um... you should absolutely try out you will not feel motion sickness it's really a, a fantastic game for beginners and even though you are looking at this world from the third person view, it's still super immersive. That's what really, um, yeah, that, that what surprised me that it's so immersive. Even though you're not first person, but you you're yeah, still yeah. part you're That's... still part of this world. You are some kind of um, yeah being that helps yeah. this little mouse, and yeah, you are you, you can interact with it, and you are part of this world, and it's super immersive. Even though you are not the mouse itself. Yeah, and if you love this kind of great. games, the other one that's much shorter than than um, Moss, but very artistic, like very beautiful. It's called Ghost Giant. Yeah, mm, fantastic. Okay. Love that. And I think maybe it's from the same developers of um, Fisherman's Tale, I think. Okay, because they also have right. this little French. It's a French company, so they add this little French like twist to it. And yeah. it's a much shorter game. But you're also like you are the giant, like a, you're you you are the ghost giant, and nobody can see you except for this little character. It's such a cute game, like it's it it has a little bit of drama, but it's just I think I finished it in two hours or three yeah. hours, and it it's like you went to an interactive movie and you spent cool. three hours watching it that and playing with fantastic. it. Fantastic, yeah. ghost it's- giant. It's um yeah my my daughter loves that she loves play she'll play through she's played through it at least three times Ghost Giant it's it's uh, a little yeah. bit more like I think oriented for maybe younger audiences <laughs> like, yeah it is yeah dramatic. yeah it is but it's still good yeah it's it's a good it's a good uh, well made um, title which is polished and it's got definitely got vibes of that moss as well in there. <laughs> So yeah. you guys, would you recommend the Quest port of Moss? Then? Is that a pretty decent port? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Right. yeah. Fantastic port, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, you can try it there. Try it. It's it's fun. It's well it's well done. I will, yeah, because I, I think for me, what regardless of what I'm doing in VR, I think games have to be have that sense of exploration, you know, and a, a world, a, a new world, whatever the world is, whether it's made of Lego or it's amazing graphics, it doesn't really matter to me. It, it has to be something where I feel like I'm inside and I can kind of explore it. So yeah. if it's, if it's this, something like yes, that, then it. yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah, I think you would like it. Cool, cool. So it's coming very soon. It's going to be available end of this month for PSVR 1, another PSVR 1 exclusive. And 
I believe it's going to appear also on Quest 2 and uh, PC VR at one point yeah. in time. Eventually. For sure, for sure. Cool, cool. So that is Moss, and let's go to our next topic. And yeah, that's something that I would like to ask Steve about the next topic. And it's oh. something that, that I have not tried yet, but it is supposed to give me more FPS. <laughs> and that is the OpenXR oh. toolkit. Right? Oh, right. Okay. Could, yeah. Could you yeah. could you tell us a bit about that? Because I had I heard great things about it, and I have recently um, talked to Kevin, the COO of um, Pimax. Like we were, we were planning the 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 12K QLED show on the channel, and he told me that it also is fantastic to get more FPS on the Pimax at KX. So, so tell tell us a bit more about it. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll, I'll just uh, briefly just mention that it's really it's an incredible uh, game changing app. I'm not going to sweet, you know, uh, literally it is so amazing what they've been able to do with this. Wow. And it's a guy who works, um, I believe, uh, at Microsoft with the OpenXR tool, uh, sorry, OpenXR team who have um, gone out on his own and uh, provided this sort of extra tool, which provide i mean it, it's like an extra feature to the uh, open xr toolkit app, uh, application that you'd but you know you'd get the uh, which gives you like um what do you call it motion reprojection but with this it actually adds another rendering pipeline um which um is a bit like i guess not like dlss as such but it's it it, it sharpens the image and, and uses a second pass with the rendering technology it's quite it's a bit mm -hmm. techy but uh, but what it means really is that the frame rate, particularly for OpenXR applications like Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is the main focus for it, run, I mean, incredibly well. Like I'm getting up to 20 frames per second more in some cases. Wow. And not only this, That's not only great. this, they've now added fo uh, fixed foveated rendering to all VR headsets that support OpenXR. So uh, what that means, basically, if you're not sure what fixed foveated rendering means, is basically, if you imagine... Uh, you know, as you look in your field of view, the area that you can uh, sort of the main area you can see is is drawn at a real high resolution, but the outer edges can then be uh, degraded, so the resolution doesn't have to show the entire image, and that really saves your GPU. Um, I've been testing this out, and it's just it is a game changer, and I, I don't like to use the word game changer. <laughs> Uh, Finally, very often yeah because you know it's it's people say all the time on fa on facebook on youtube you know like wow this is game change amazing update but this really is it's it's superb um and even more than that the via aero is going to get eye tracking well yeah dynamic foveated rendering support in april that is yeah that absolutely is massive game changer because we've wanted dynamic favorite rendering for a uh, a very long time it's the next yeah. step for vr it really is so what that means is wherever you look is going to rent be rendered in ultra high quality the best of that he of the headset you're using and it's going to gradually get less and less as it draws out and it will just track your eyes really fast the idea is you won't notice it i mean i haven't tried it yet but i'm, I'm do you know trying it soon steve yeah. do you know if that is like on a, a system level with a uh, arrow or is it sort of per application so each like microsoft flight simulator would need to get an update or 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 it would need to be implemented in the software for microsoft flight simulator um in the arrow yeah software no, software. It, yeah it's it's just driven through that runtime of the open xr uh, toolkit so it, it could feasibly be used with other games as well so that support right. the open xr but at the moment the driving force behind it is the sim yeah, so we're very, yeah, I feel very lucky that, you know, of all the things this guy, you know, wants to use Microsoft Flight Simulator, I think, because it's been such a drive for VR in this sim anyway. Um, so so that, this dynamic you know, forwarded rendering, it's happening in the OpenXR toolkit? Yes. Well, um, obviously, because the Aero supports it, it just, just it's kind of, I guess it's linked to the Vario based software so that okay. it can be supported. Uh, but, it, you know, I mean, I'm honestly not. Uh, sort of, I don't understand all of it because it just sounds yeah. like magic to me. To be honest, it's like yeah, you know. Cool. And uh, I've I've tried to contact the developer, and um, he doesn't really want to know, which is a shame. So if you're listening, you know, get me on board. But he doesn't seem to want to know, which is really annoying because I would love to be able to beta test this more because I've got all the different headsets. Because like the Pimax AKX really does. It makes a huge difference to that headset. I can now use it in Microsoft Flight Simulator now and get reasonable yeah, results. Wow, in the cool. Aero, 
I was getting 60 frames per second. Wow, that's crazy. In that sim with the arrow the other day. So we, and we that's fixed for the rendering. Thanks yeah, to that's it. fixed. So yeah. imagine. Oh my god, I'm so excited! <laughs> imagine that with dynamic favorited rendering, yeah, we, we might be able to, we might be able to reach the 90 frames per second, uh, sort of you know area, or at least very close to that uh, with this sort of dynamic favorited rendering. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a huge deal. And you can change other things as well. You can change the colors, the world scale. It's so configurable. And I really hope that more applications will be able to utilize this in the future. And it's just, it's going berserk. There's so many updates coming out for this. Um, yeah. Well, everything, everything's being developed for OpenXR now anyway, really. Yeah. Anybody that's making a new thing, will it will be OpenXR, I would imagine. So yeah, it should be uh, should be able to be used for a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And what it, all it's very simple. All it does in in the sim, it's very easy to you just install it like a little little app on your desktop, enable it, and then when you're in the sim, you can set it to a certain key, and then it comes up, and you have this big dialog box, and then you have all these different settings. You can use FSR or I, uh, I, NIS, sorry for the scaler, uh, and then you have got the sharpening tool as well for the arrow because it's so damn sharp anyway. It actually makes it worse, um, but for the G2, it makes it way well, better. Like the G2 wow. sharpness, it looks really amazing with the G2. I it tried... actually makes the sweet spot more as well. This, so. this has been out for a while, hasn't it? Because I'm pretty sure I downloaded this. When I did the Reverb, Reverb G2, and it was based on one of your videos, Steve, actually, where you featured oh, yes. OpenXR Toolkit. So I yeah. downloaded this when I had the Reverb G2, and there's a lot of options in there. I didn't really dive in too deeply with it, to be honest. But, yeah, I mean, it seems almost like a necessity. Like, if you've got a quest or something, or a riff, Massive. it's like the yeah. uh, the tray tools, the, the Oculus tray tool thing. It's that kind of yes. equivalent. But It but, is. Yeah. In fact, I'd recommend using the tray tool still, actually, with the Quest. Yeah. I, I used the Quest every day in the sim, and it looks so much better with this because you can rank up, you know, crank up that uh, sharpening. Um, it's actually, it sounds a bit intimidating, all this stuff, but it, honestly, it really isn't um, because all you, all you need to do is install it, then run it, and enable perfect. it. And it's and for free, and you can it. simply get it from uh, from their yeah, website. You I'm simply gonna... look for OpenXR Toolkit, and you're going to find it or what? I'll send you a link on the chat okay, now if anyone cool. wants to check it out. But <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to check it out. It, it's incredible. I, I I cannot believe where the, this has just come out of nowhere. I never had any, in my wildest dreams imagined someone from Microsoft, an actual employee, going out on their own and doing the things we've always wanted, and really like honing in all of those settings and getting support from uh, different headsets and you know enabling eye track. Vario should be doing this, really, to be honest. Um, but thank God this guy is, and he's managed to get it all in there. Uh, and I think the next time we we do the podcast, um, well, actually, no, it might not be ready by then. But I, I'm literally going to be so like amazed by this because I do think this is going to make a big difference to frame rate, and that's what okay. we need right now, desperately. Wow, perfect! Yeah. I will totally check it out. Also, together with the 8KX and the Arrow and the G2, because it's usable for all the headsets, right? So. That's I'm amazing. hoping he's going to look at parallel reprojections next because Asobo, yeah. Asobo, why they don't seem to be interested in in, in, in really uh, sort of highlighting the support for wider field of view headsets. So okay. unfortunately, that's why you need parallel reprojections in the 8KX, which takes off 30% of the performance mm -hmm. straight away. Okay. But I reckon this guy he's going to solve that soon, and then we won't even need that. And then the 8KX. You'll be able to run that at like 60 60 yeah. frames per second or more that would be with that wide know. field of view. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a dream. Nice. It's going to be a dream. Ah, oh, good. So everything is looking quite good for VR at least. So that's amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, cool. Cool. Let's um <laughs> let's now get to the end. We're already more than 2 hours in. And yeah, it's great to be back here with the Next Dimension podcast. <laughs> I hope that all of you out there enjoyed the show enjoyed that we are back if yes now give us a thumbs up and if you haven't done so yet please do give us a review on itunes open your podcast app in on your iDevice, find the next dimension podcast and do give us a five star review if you enjoy the show and if you are happy that we're back for sure we are really happy to be back and that's it for season two episode 18 of the next dimension podcast Yep. And that's awesome. everything we have to awesome. say. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and we're looking forward to see you in the next episode. Until then, 
Bye-bye. Bye. See you soon. Yes, we are back. Yeah, how did it feel for you to be <sighs> back? Yeah, it I, was good. Yeah, it, it's funny. So with the Open XR Toolkit thing, I, I had no idea he was going to talk talk about that, and I was like a bit like, <laughs> "Oh crap, you're going to talk about that?" And I was like, oh, "I wasn't prepared for it." But uh, no, very exciting. Yeah, I knew. I knew that you knew it. <laughs> that you know yeah. about it. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, cool. yeah, right, right. Yeah, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be back and. Yeah, it was not so so easy to start today, right? Obviously, because of uh, yeah everything that's going on in the world. But I think we still did a good job on that. Yeah, it was nice to get my mind off of the things for a little bit. I right when I work on these things, I kind of realized how much I missed working on VR content and just like getting back into the depth of what's going on in the industry because I felt like I was so behind. And you know, the further behind you get the harder it is to to get back to it mentally because you feel like you're so exactly. you're so like behind everything that there's no way you can catch up so this was a very nice start for me today both with you know publishing the very first video in a while like a, a, a full video not a short right. and going to this awesome podcast and talking to you guys just <laughs> motivated great. me again i'm still yeah. you know I'm, every day is like Today is better. This moment is better. Then it's a little bit worse. Then it's better. Then it's worse. So it's always like, uh, <laughs> it, it's not the same for me, like mm. how I feel. You can ask me how I am several times a day. I'll give you a different answer. But it's still great to to get back into the field that I love. So thanks, everyone in the chat and my viewers who are supporting me. Sorry, I made it about myself again. But no, no, it's, I won't it's, be totally nice. it's, it's very understandable. It's yeah. very understandable. Yeah. yeah, but it's been my pleasure. Yeah, great. Thank Perfect. you for coming on. And I think, really? as I say, it's so, so strong of you to come on and, and do this show. And that in itself just says everything. And, and thank you. It's, what I'm doing is not strong yeah. at all. What people in Ukraine are doing is strong. So I'm inspired by them. And I'm just proud, you know, that to, to be one of them, basically. Yeah, you should be proud. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's so good to speak with you again, with all of you. I, I really missed that, to get together and talk about our favorite topic. It's it's just nice. And it's just a great atmosphere to speak with you guys about yeah, it. Yeah, great. considering really, I mean, yeah. I know there's in some ways there's been a lot going on in the world of VR, but really there's really been not that much. And I'm yeah, hoping You're right. That, it's so slow, that, actually. Right? Yeah. Over the next few months, I'm really hoping things will start to ramp up, especially with PSVR 2 yes. and that kind of stuff. That's really what I'm looking forward to. And I think, honestly, I'm, I don't, I'm not a content creator, but I, I watch a lot of content. I, I, I make videos. I'm, I don't, I'm not a content creator, but I make, <laughs> I watch are. a lot of content you creators. You are. Very good who, as well. Who, yeah, like who, uh, who talk about PSVR 2 a lot because they know that that will be the dawn of something big happening. There will be stuff will. to talk about week on week. And that's that's the thing that we've been missing lately, I think. And I'm looking forward to it for PSVR 2, honestly. Um, right. But yeah, it does, it does feel a little bit quiet in some ways, VR, at the moment. Exactly. I reckon we're going to get a PC VR headset soon. Uh, so. Not Pimax related, but I think we're going to get something. I've got a feeling. Something's Hope we get something I know it. less than a £1,000. <laughs> <laughs> The best yeah, thing is everything is always G3. not telling us anything. Yeah. Something is going to happen. I feel it. Well, you know well it. let's get off I this know, show yeah, and then you can it. tell yeah, us. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, sure yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. So good. So that's that's it for Season 2, Episode 18. Hope you enjoyed it. Everything. Smash and destroy the like button. Do leave a comment. That does help the algorithm because these long shows, normally the uh, YouTube algorithm doesn't like it. So... Please leave and leave a comment and do do tell your friends about it. Do tell your friends who are new to VR. Tell them about the Next Dimension podcast. Tell them that this is a really good podcast that you enjoy and probably more people will join us. We are super glad to be back and we're going to see each other next week. Until then, bye-bye. Take bye. care.